Cal has a wild start of their own. Being the only team this season to claim a victory over the USC Trojans. Can they pull off another hard-earned win? Find out on ESPN's postseason matchup now. Welcome to Bank One Ballpark as college football fever is heating up. As we have a meeting between East and West, it's the inside bowl. The Pac-10 and the Big East as the 7-6 Golden Bears get ready to take on the Virginia Tech Hokies at 8-4. The Cal team winner of four of their final games with one of the bright young quarterbacks in college football takes the field here as they get set to take on the Hokies. It ought to be a great one here from the Valley of the Sun. We'll come back to set the stage right after this. Dave Spencer. New intern. Normally it's a baseball venue, but tonight it's college football, the inside bowl from Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix, Arizona. The Golden Bears at 7-6, and six, taking on the Hokies 8-4 here at the inside bowl. Hi everybody, Mark Malone along with Mike Golick. Glad you could join us. We ought to have a good one. We've got two teams heading in opposite directions. Certainly the Hokies faded down the stretch. Cal, meanwhile, won four of their last five ball games. And in those four wins, Mike, they scored 43 points on average. Oh, uh, they're doing Jeff Tetford got this team really turned around. First back-to-back -back winning seasons in 12 years. First bowl since mm. 96. They're putting points on the board. It's a very balanced attack. When you talk about offense and you look at Virginia Tech, you've got to talk running back. Kevin Jones, one of the premier backs in the country, nearly 1,500 yards this season. Well, he is the workhorse for this team, no doubt about it. He's declared already for the draft, so this is his last game with Virginia Tech, about a 225-pounder. Very patient cut, uh, runner, great cutback runner. He is going to be the workhorse for tonight, no doubt. Meanwhile, that Cal defense hasn't given up 100 yards rushing in their last four outings, so that'll be an interesting matchup. Meanwhile, that Cal offense suffered a devastating loss earlier in the week, an injury. For more on that, let's introduce you to the third member of our team, Rob Stone. Rob? freak injury this week at practice to their leading wideout and team offensive MVP Jeff MacArthur. He went down low for a pass, smacked his right forearm against his right knee with so much force that he cleanly broke the ulna and a couple splinters as well. He's going to have surgery January 3rd, so he is ruled out of this game. Now consider, Mark, how important he is to this team's offense. Only Heisman Trophy runner-up Larry Fitzgerald averaged more yards receiving per game than did MacArthur, so it's going to be up to a bunch of other guys to pick up his slack. Well, and curling Burl Toller, a former walkout, and Chase Lyman, who has often been injured as well. As we take a look at the head coach of Cal, Jeff Tedford, in his second season, as Mike mentioned, the first back-to-back -back winning seasons now for this football team in 12 years, 14 and 11, and say what, he's all business, Mike. Uh, and, and he is leading a program. He's a quarterback guy, as we'll get into. He's, he's really tutored a lot of fine quarterbacks, first-rounders that have gone on to the NFL. And we may see may another future one tonight in Aaron Rodgers, a fantastic quarterback. He'll get a big dose up tonight. Frank Beamer, the head coach of the Virginia Tech Hokies in his 17th season at Vaude Tech, has really put that program on the map. A 635 winning percentage. And, of course, the Big East Coach of the Year back in 99 when this football team was so close and lost the national championship game. Well, this is a team that realizes they didn't meet expectations this year. And how you mentioned it at the, at the top, Cal is coming in hot, Virginia Tech coming in cold, but they're, they're used to being right in the running for a BCS bowl. They're mad they're not there. <laughs> I would expect an ornery team to come out tonight for Virginia Tech. Coach Beamer said, in fact, you can expect that from us. As you look at a sellout crowd here at Bank One Ballpark, the city of Phoenix has embraced this bowl game, and they are out to support it tonight as Virginia Tech had won the toss but elects to defer. So Carter Warley will do the kicking for the Hokies. 5'11", 195 pounds, a red shirt senior. Deep. That is number three, James Bathia. Six foot, 190 pounds, out of Cleveland High School in Reseda, California. And we are off. From the five. The field is stacked up at about the 20-yard line, and that's where the Cal offense will begin. A return of 16 yards on the kick. Quarterbacking for Cal, Aaron Rodgers, a sophomore who transferred from Butte College in 
He had the best sophomore season in Pac-10 history, Mike. 60% of his passes he completed, 17 touchdowns over 2,500 yards. You're going to love watching this kid, quarterback and quarterback coaches out there. Technically sound, keeps the ball up. We'll be breaking him down all night, but he looks like a, like a big-time quarterback. Might be yet another great one for Jeff Tedford, the quarterback guru. Cal lines up in a single back. And here comes Rogers. Plenty of time. It looks deep. It has Kohler, who pulls it in near the 40-yard line. And that'll be a Cal first down. Jimmy Williams in coverage after a game of 19 yards. Take a look at the offense. Adam Chinobi, Ichimandu, the running back, will get the bulk of the work. And again, we mentioned Lyman will be the receiver taking over for MacArthur. Offensive line, a big and talented one, led by Mark Wilson, the left tackle, making his 48th start, breaks the school record set by Todd Stussy, who had 46 starts for the Golden Bears. First and 10, play action bootleg. It dumped off to the fullback, Mandarino, who breaks the tackle and gets out past the 50-yard line. D'Angelo Hall was there on the stop, but not until an 11-yard game. Here's your Bob Tech defense, Nathaniel Adibi, starting in his fourth bowl game at defensive end. At the linebacker spot, Mikel Kabaki, 100 tackles and an interception on the season. And in the secondary, keep your eyes on number four, D'Angelo Hall. He is a three-way threat, plays offense and one of the best returners in the country. So Cal crosses midfield and has another first down. And again, they come out throwing. Looking deep, and oh, almost complete to Toller. Jimmy Williams, the free safety, was there with the stop, but a great play, and there's a flag on the play. It's going to be offside on Cole Colas, number 99, lined up almost on the offensive side of the field. <laughs> so that one downfield was almost a, a free play on the, in the offside lining up in the neutral zone. Nick Define, the referee for the Mid-American Conference officials who are doing this game today. Defense, offside, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. Well, here you go, Jeff McCarthy, the second leading receiver in the country, is out, so you figure, oh, they're going to rely more on the run a little bit. Nah, why do that? Let's keep passing the ball. <laughs> Toller now is in the football game with a three-wide receiver set. Gray and Chase Lyman are in the lineup for Cal. And as they face a first and five now off of the penalty. Yes, yes, yes. And Ichimandu gets the carry off the right side and plows forward for about two or three yards on the play before Jonathan Lewis, the defensive tackle, makes the stop. Take a look at this Cal season so far. They struggled early. Their first eight games, three and five, Mike, but then some big wins particularly against USC in the three overtime game and against Washington to finish seven and six, the second seven and six season back to back now for Jeff Tedford. Well, trying to bring this Cal program back again. He likes the balance attack, had MacArthur receiving, had Jamanda running the ball and Rogers throwing the ball. Uh, it's been a fantastic day. Maybe Cal's back on the upswing. Second and five now. Two backs in the ball game. And Rogers, who will do a lot of this, audibles at the line of scrimmage. And Vautech moves, and Rogers will call a timeout. So, the chess game begins here at the Inside Bowl. We'll be back with more action right after this. Tonight, it's college football. The Inside Bowl. Cal and Virginia Tech. And it is a retractable roof here. It was open for the pregame ceremonies, but just moments ago, they have closed the roof on what is a chilly night here in the Valley of the Sun. Well, chilly. Speak for yourself. I came from this game from Connecticut. That's chilly. Out here, it's very nice. <laughs> so, second and three now for the Golden Bear. Three wide receiver set. Ichimandu off the right side, over the 40, but he's going to be short of the first down. Tim Sandage makes the stop at defensive tackle. Well, this is going to be interesting, Mark, today, because Virginia Tech loves to just load it up and stop the run, something they struggled mightily in the last four games, three of which were losses. They gave up about a buck 79 on the ground, but they are saying, we're going to stop your run. We still think we can cover you throwing the ball, so they're going to try and take one of the elements for Cal away. And in that no man's land, so Cal decides to go for it here on third and a long one. 
Play action. The bootleg outside to Brandon Hall, the tight end, down the right sideline and forced out of bounds near the 11-yard line by D'Angelo Hall. 27 yards on the pass play. He basically just got lost out there. No coverage. They were coming to stop the run. They thought it was going to be the run. Excellent play fake right at the top. He's jammed by Vegas Robinson. And then D'Angelo Hall, number four, you see, comes in, and he turns around and starts sprinting. Easy play, great play fake. Take advantage of an aggressive defense. Number 85, Vincent Strang, just 150 pounds. A senior wide receiver has checked into the football game now. He has five touchdowns on the season. That's him in motion. The reverse to Strang outside. He's got two blockers. Cuts it inside and down at the five-yard line by several defensive players from Virginia Tech. Six yards on the pickup. Looks like they're trying to slow that defense down a little bit, Mike. Excellent job. You're absolutely right. An aggressive defense, you want to get them on their heels a little bit, and misdirection will certainly do that. What you get here is nice blocking downfield. As you mentioned, Mark, he had a couple blockers down there. He cuts back behind him. But this is an aggressive defense, and Cal's, I think, doing the right thing. They started with some passes. Don't let them come right after you. And then some misdirection plays to kind of get them guessing a little bit. And there's Bud Foster, the deep coordinator, and he is an intense man. A two-tight end set now for the seventh play of this drive. Rogers, which him on Hard yards up inside. And he's dragged down at about the three-yard line after a gain of one. Crawford and Burchett were there for the stop. Yeah, that's going to be tough going for Cal to try and go directly between the tackles. Virginia Tech pretty stout in there. A couple of big tackles, uh, D tackles, and they rotate in a couple of more. Now they can get a first down here just inside the one-yard line. Take a look at the red zone offense for California. 81%, 39 scores and 49 possessions. 74% of those touchdowns. Pretty impressive. That is very, very impressive. Got to work it out for them now on a third and three. They can't get a first down and not score here. And there's some confusion with the snap count, and I think Cal's going to get penalized here. Now, as a former quarterback, I will admit sheepishly here that there have been times I've forgotten the count and, and made my offensive lineman, frankly, look ridiculous. You know what? And just like <laughs> I have kind of, as we look at Cal's penalty yards, been a nose tackle and jumped off sides, and people say, the ball's right in front of you. So, nose tackles and quarterbacks, were all not perfect, are we? Been a very disciplined <laughs> Cal football team, yeah. leading the Pac-10 in fewest penalty yards per game. This one didn't help here because Cal is used to the payoff of touchdowns. So Virginia Tech would be do well to hold a little field goal. Third and eight now. Three wide receivers for Rogers. Sends Strang in motion. Rogers under pressure, tucks it. Back up inside. Close to the goal line, but no signal yet. And again, they can get a first down without scoring. Vegas Robinson and Jimmy Williams were there for what appears to be an eight-yard pickup. It will not be a touchdown, but That's good right. enough for a first down. That'll be a first down. Good job by Rodgers. He waited as long as he could and then broke down the field. And Brandon Hall, number 11, the tight end, realizes if he gets a block downfield here, you see him coming to your screen right there. And Rodgers is able to come off. Now, Vegas Robinson was able to make the tackle, but because of the block by Hall, he was able to get the first down. So, Rodgers... Courageous in his scrambling. Sets up a first and goal now. And he takes it on the sneak over the right side. It's still no signal. <laughs> Mid-American Conference referees group is tough. See, I hate this part of it, Mark. I mean, make a call. He could be crawling in the end zone. Touchdown, <laughs> So Jeff Tepper gets a big first drive out of that Cal offense. It has been so hot, averaging 43 points in their last four wins. And they jump out early on Vontae. Well, you see it. The ball crosses the line. Tough to see there, and I guess that's why the officials didn't call until so they ran in there. Waited to see what went on. Good job by George Cortez, the offensive coordinator, leading that drive down. That brings on Tyler Fredrickson, the senior, out of Santa Barbara for the extra point. This kid's got a leg, sometimes sporadic, but he can really kick it. And he boots that through, and we have a 7-0 lead from the Cal Golden Bears. As Jeff Tedford, the quarterback guru and offensive line, waits and waits, and it says touchdown. 
Angered by the sacrificial rituals of tribal priests, the Ad Presentation of the 2003 Insight Bowl. Presented by Insight. Your single source for IT products and services. And in part by Jeep. If it's not trail rated, it's not a Jeep 4x4. And Red Lobster. Come enjoy all the succulent shrimp you crave during Endless Shrimp. Welcome back to Phoenix, Arizona. Bank One Ballpark. For the inside bowl, as California has jumped off to an early 7-0 lead now with 9.56 remaining in the first quarter. And if you like some offense, you're going to love this football game. What an excellent drive by Cal, led by that man right there. Rogers 3 for 3 and 59 yards on the drive. As Fredrickson sends it deep, Emo, Mike Emo, takes it at the 2. Got some space. Out to the 30 with some more room by Fredrickson. And oh. down the sideline. It finally tackled. Across midfield and near the 40 by Matt Giordano. A 52-yard punt return. And Emu, all five foot seven of them, Mark. You look, look at the balance here. Right in the beginning, we almost gets his legs taken out. What a great job of keeping his balance and breaking it back outside, setting up his blocks incredibly well. That's the way to start a drive. Imo averaged just over 29 yards of return in the Big East. Had a touchdown. In fact, he finished second in the Big East in punt return yards. Brian Randall, the quarterback, begins the game out of the shotgun. Four wide receivers. And under pressure immediately, and sacked for about a seven-yard loss by Tosh LaPoy, the defensive end. That's his third sack of the season. Well, nice sack, but, I mean, Randall was almost right there, Mark. It looked like a fake quick pass, and Randall didn't go anywhere. See you, Mike, again. You talk about they come out four wide to throw, but this guy's about running the football. He is, and he didn't see something right away. He started to break to the outside, but he was only about a yard behind the line of scrimmage. Made it easy for the D-line. So that brings up second and 19. Toss it outside to Jones. He shakes one tackle, oh. and he cuts it back outside. And finally, run to the ground past the 40-yard line by Ryan Gutierrez after a 14-yard gain. As we take a look at the rest of that offense now, again, we mentioned Jones, one of the elite runners in college football, will opt out for the NFL. Ernest Wilford, the wide receiver that they'll look to most. And up front, the big uglies are big and ugly, <laughs> including Jay Grove, the Remington winner. 704 snaps, the best center in college football, Mike. He is, will be big time in the NFL. This kid gets out and pulls. He's about a 300-pounder. You'll see him lead in sweeps. He's an incredible athlete, which now the center position has become. I had the, the, uh, the enjoyment of presenting him the Remington Award a little bit a while ago. Great kid, great family. Met his uh, folks, his fiance, and uh, he's getting ready right after this game. He's going to play in the Senior Bowl, and then he's going to just prepare for that combine in the NFL. Well, if you're a quarterback or an NFL head coach, you want to start an offense, you look to the center. Yep. Grove is the guy. Let's check in with Rob Stone right now. Rob? Hey, Mark, the Hokies offensive coordinator, Brian Steinfring, he, he jots down a few words for his offensive linemen when they hand in their football test the day before the game. His words to Grove, quote, you played every game like it was your last. Now finish what you started. I said, well, that's great, but how, how do you do on that test you gave him? He goes, I don't even bother looking at his test anymore. <laughs> and he knows it, too. He nails them all. He's 100 percenter. He is a great guy. Yeah. You mentioned, you know, his parents. He's a farm boy. He yep. grew up on the farm. He doesn't mind getting in there and getting dirty. He said he worked a, a week with his granddad, and he said his, his granddad would run him into the ground. He <laughs> said, I couldn't keep up with the guy. But he is, he's something else. I mean, he's an, he's an animal. He's aggressive. Yet again, you always talk that left tackle being the athlete, which they do need to be to protect the blind side of the quarterback. But centers now have to become that as well and be on the move, and he is exactly that. Third down conversions for Vatek, 33%. Fourth in the Big East as they line up out of the shot and four wide receivers. Randall, the strike to Wilford. Inside the 30-yard line, Gutierrez makes the play after an eight-yard uh, gain, and they'll move the chains. Let's take a look at that Cal defense real quickly. Up front, Lorenzo Alexander, number 76, the defensive leader on that football team. 
at the linebacker spot, number nine, Joe Meningo. Had a knee injury early on, then moved from outside to inside. He's got a big motor, but really keep your eye on number 21, Donnie McCleskey. A school record 99 tackles to the defensive back spot. A flag is on the play, and it got stopped before it ever got going. Prior to the snap, full start on the offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. Oh, there's Vic. Marcus Vick, the younger brother of Mike Vick, who has played a role in this offense, both at quarterback and at wide receiver, sometimes at running back, especially when Randall has struggled, is now in the ball game. But he lines up wide left as a wide receiver. There you go, Mike. In motion, they fake the reverse and hand it off to Jones, who again is dragged down by Dante Hughes, number 13. Well, we talked about this guy, Jones, and leaving the program after this year, going to the draft. And, Mark, what offensive coaches are going to love about this guy is his patience. And now he's over 1,500 yards, right at 1,500 yards, is his patience and his ability to wait for the line to finish their block and then cut behind it. Usually don't find that too quickly with young guys coming into the NFL. Oh, he's come out now with a two-tight end set. Willis and Jeff King, the two-tight end. They come out throwing out of it. And the ball is overthrown to Chris Shreve, the 5'11 redshirt senior out of Grayson County, Virginia. Well, if he threw that one to uh, Ernest Wilford, it might have been a complete. Shreve's 5'11, <laughs> Wilford 6'4. But, you know, Randall, not, not the thrower that we're going to see from Rodgers for Cal. Uh, Randall does a pretty good job throwing the ball, but he, he does a nice job with his feet escaping, either making the play outside the pocket or running the ball. Strong arm, very athletic quarterback, but not particularly accurate. Randall, the screen outside to Jones. He slips the tackle again. Down the right sideline and finally forced out of, ball, uh, out of bounds at about the 15-yard line after an 11-yard pickup. Well, I, be, I believe it was Matt Giordano that had a chance at him in the backfield. You see it on the left side of your screen. Jones gives him the loose hip, and he scoots. Great job. Boy, you know what, you know what I like about it? He does so well is he does that. And he's looking downfield. He knows he's going to beat that guy, and he's already looking downfield on who he has to beat next. Good point. A quick screen outside to Marcus Vick. He gets a stiff arm on Hughes, and then down inside the five to the four-yard line. A gain of 13 on the play, but there's also a flag down. That's working on the true freshman out there, Damien Hughes. And we see Vic got a stiff arm up and Hughes got an arm up. Maybe somebody got a face mask. That's exactly what happened. It was on Hughes, the personal foul. Well, when you have an athlete, you get him on the field. No matter what position he is, you get the ball in his hand. There you see Hughes at his right hand on the face mask. Well, this is somebody asked me before the game, we're going to see Vic at quarterback? I said, let me just say this. You're going to see Vic. And we'll just stop there. <laughs> Not exactly sure where we'll see him, but as the coaches told us, when we talked to Frank Beamer, he said he's too great an athlete not to have on the field. Even if Randall's playing quarterback, we need him in the football game. Two tight ends. The option, and Randall cuts it up inside. Touchdown, Von Tech, but another flag is down. Well, that's the advantage of a mobile quarterback. Let's see if it holds up. Nick Define trying to get the call here. We'll hear from him. Offsides on Cal, so the touchdown stands. And Virginia Tech, who has struggled down the stretch, answers the early call from California. Well, we've had two excellent drives, which is always great in the offensive meeting, but it's <laughs> awful if you're on the defensive side of the ball. Carter Warley now on the field for the extra point. Robert Peasley will do the holding. Two touchdowns, both quarterbacks going both quarterbacks. quarterbacks. And Worley is perfect. And just like that, we've got a 7-7 football game. As Brian Randall hasn't been great throwing the football, but he has run it enough to make this a tie football game.
to the inside bowl as we have a tied score. Cal and Virginia Tech 7-7 seven, seven, thanks in large part to the tight end. Jeff King, Mike. Well, Wendell Hunter, number 40, was sliding. Here comes King right there with the block that frees up Randall. Great job. I'm sure there's Cal fans watching all over the country that said he hit him in the back. <laughs> no, he, he caught him in the side, right hand on the on the, the the side of the jersey, on the shoulders. A nice block. Wendell Hunter, the linebacker, was blocked. Never saw it coming. Nope. So, the kick is away now and deep. Bathia, he takes it at the three. And corralled about the 15-yard line. And that's where Cal will take over. Just a reminder, Capital One Bowl Week continues this Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern on ESPN2 as Heisman runner-up Larry Fitzgerald leads the Panthers into Charlotte to take on quarterback Matt Schwab and the Virginia Cavaliers. Of course, Fitzgerald, the Pitt Panther, 87 receptions on the season, Mike. Nearly 1,600 yards and 22 touchdowns. Now, that's the quarterback's best friend. He was my Heisman vote this year. Uh, he is just fantastic. He's the best player in college football. And if he wins uh, his quest to get to the NFL, he'll be one of the top picks. He's a fantastic ball player. I would have to agree with you. So, Cal starts at their own 17-yard line. And they come out throwing again. Kohler gets the ball on the hit. And is racked up at about the 23-yard line after a gain of seven. D'Angelo Hall makes the tackle. Well, take a look at Cal in their first drive, which resulted in the touchdown. Nice play action fake out to Brandon Hall. Big play on third down here. Rogers running down the field. Another actually nice block by Hall again there. And then Rogers finishes it off. The seven first one. And Oakley Dan doing the touchdown. You gotta love the quarterback uh, the touchdown. I'd like to play for Jeff Tedford. He has had quite a hand in the development of quarterbacks that have gone on. His first round draft picks to the NFL. Hands off. Ichimondu, who has hit hard at the line of scrimmage, maybe picks up two on the play. Vegas Robinson and Mattel Baki, the two linebackers, are there first for the Hokies. Well, Ichimondu, what a story that is, Mark. Oh. Uh, this guy's been out of ball the last couple of years, and he really has taken the Pac-10 by storm this year. He's having a fantastic year as you see his numbers. And they're going to rely on him a little more when they have to run it because... Jeff MacArthur is out, and that is a shame we're not seeing him play, but Echimondu uh, certainly is making his mark this year. Had 147 yards in the triple overtime win against USC. J.J. MacArthur, or Art Arrington, excuse me, is in now for Echimondu, and he's lined up wide left. And Rogers, his trip coming away from center. And, of course, in college football, you hit the ground, you're down, and that'll be a loss of four. And that's it. Now they're punting. I mean, Mark, I, you, you were quarterback for obviously college 10 years or so in the NFL. I mean, is, is that squarely on the lineman? Well, in pass protection, you know, Mike, they're trying to get back. And yeah. uh, a big, tall guy like Rogers sometimes gets his feet up underneath there. The guy takes a big step back, you're going to end up stepping on the quarterback. It happens far too often. Tyler Fredrickson now averaging 40 yards a punt is in for town. D'Angelo Hall. The always dangerous punt returner, deep for Virginia Tech, but he won't have a chance to field this. A poor kick bounces past the 45 and down at about the 43-yard line. A 36-yard punt. Well, of course, Cal, obviously a hot finish, but what they did earlier in the season is just unbelievable. Against USC, second overtime, Jonathan McKinnon, a 20-yard pass from Reggie Robertson, then Jerry Colbert, the 10-yard touchdown from Matt Leinert, and that set up the third overtime. Tyler Fredrickson, a 38-yard field goal counted, a triple overtime win for California against number three, USC, the first time they beat the team ranked that high since Stanford back in 1951. Boy, oh boy, what, a, what an incredible victory. One, I'm sure, still makes USC cringe, <laughs> considering what's going on now that I'm sure we'll talk about the BCS. So, Vontek again, well, the option pass. The ball deep intended for Wilford, an overthrow. Johnson was the thrower on the reverse pitch, but he and he had a wide open Wilford, but just overthrew him. Richard Johnson with the pass. What's interesting is you would think maybe it would be uh, Marcus Vick would be the one throwing the ball, being the quarterback. But here's Richard Johnson. He has Wilford wide open. Just overthrows him, threw it over the wrong shoulder, had him looking over, switching shoulders, and then too deep. Ed Gutierrez fooled there. 
Brings up second and ten. And the quarterback draw up inside and hit pretty quickly by Wendell Hunter, the outside linebacker, but not until Randall picks up six yards on the play. Set play the whole time, and Randall does a nice job of showing patience. So does the line. Then Jake Grove, he comes right back to the middle. The center, Grove, out hitting the linebacker, taking care of business. That time it was Joe Meningo he blocked. Gave Randall a bit of a hole. The game is six yards. Very manageable now at third and four. Quarterbacks like that, don't they? They like that. Third and short. But when you have a back like Kevin Jones, yeah. you're going to get a lot of manageable second and third downs. This is third and four. A flag on the play. Still three seconds remaining on the game clock, or on the uh, play clock, excuse me. If that, that happens, it's probably going to be movement against Virginia Tech and from the manageable third and four to a less than desirable nine. third and nine. Turn the snap. Full start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Replay third down. Meanwhile, Marcus Vick, who is prominent in the first drive, is back on the sideline. Three penalties now for 15 yards in the first quarter for Virginia Tech. I don't think Marcus likes standing on the sideline. No. No. <laughs> Didn't look happy. Three wide receiver set. Third and nine. Three man rush from town. Plenty of time for Randall. Now it's flush. Looking deep. Has a wide receiver. That screen. And he hauls it in inside the five yard line at the three. Ryan Gutierrez was there on the play. 53 yards on the reception just a bad mistake by Gutierrez he's the free safety he's the man that cannot let anybody behind him as soon as the quarterback Randall starts to roll Gutierrez starts to slide and move up instead of staying back not letting the deepest receiver get behind him he's moving with Randall all of a sudden the ball's in the air Gutierrez looks behind him and says "Uh oh I gotta be there and he's not and Shreve gets the reception Gutierrez awarded the big hitter award for Cal is Hero is Ronnie Lott. They hand the ball off into Kevin Jones. He's caught up at the ankle right at the line of scrimmage. Might pick up a yard on the play before Josh Beckham is there to make the stop. Boy, that'll just make you sick giving up a, a you know, basically a broken play. Randall's a three-man rush. He still gets flushed out of the, pro, the out of the pocket. You have eight back. Eight back. You've got to stay in your area. The thing you're, you're taught as, de as a defense, when the quarterback's rolling, if you're going to move with him, fine, but don't lose sight of your responsibility. See the red zone numbers, 85% on terms of their scores. 24 touchdowns and 41 possessions. King in motion. Play action pass, looking into the end zone, and touchdown, Keith Willis. The Hokie tight end wide open off the play action. From inside the five-yard line. Well, Donnie McCluskey, the rover, had some words for the linebacker, Wendell Hunter, after that one, like that was Hunter's man. And he wasn't there because you had a wide-open Willis on that one. Randall got that one in there, too, didn't he? Yeah, you don't want to be in the wrong place at the wrong time for a Randall throw. He <laughs> could break a finger or two. He zips it in there. Warley now comes on for the extra point. Not a problem for the redshirt senior. And just like that, not only does Virginia Tech answer, but they come back now and score on back-to-back -back possessions. The big play, the deep ball. After Randall extends the play, goes deep, and finds Shreve. Almost 60 yards, and Bart Vatek scores on the next play. It's 14-7. Oh, Phoenix, Arizona, the inside bowl. Virginia Tech taking a 14-7 lead now with 2.44 remaining in this football game. Keith Willis, the tight end, wide open, gets his first touchdown reception of the season to put the Hokies up by one score. Big play there, the long pass to Shreve when Gutierrez for Cal got caught out of position. Randall just aired it out, put him in a great position for the score. Well, he sends it deep. J.J. Arrington take it at the eight. Back 
here at the 23 yard line as we check in with Rob Stone, who has a special guest. Rob? And we're joined by Tim Brown, President and CEO of Insight Enterprises. Tell us a little bit about your company. People may not be aware of it. Inside Enterprise is a single source provider of IT products and services. It's where America, American business buys its computer. You've said this before, haven't you? I can tell. <laughs> Every now and then I say it. <laughs> tell me a little bit about the future of this Insight Bowl. This is our seventh year here, and we're just so excited to have a sellout crowd at Bank One Ballpark here in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. All right, thanks for having us. We're having a good time. Thank you. All right, Rob, it is a great bowl. To be able to hold two bowls, this bowl and the Fiesta Bowl, in the same city is amazing. comes out running the football. J.J. Arrington loses three yards on the first down and will bring up second and 13. But you, you mentioned this place for a bowl, Mark, out here in Phoenix. What we, Cal bought, I think, I think sold 7,000 tickets, Virginia Tech 3,000. They got another 30-some thousand here of fans wanting to see some good football. I'm sure, I'm sure probably an affiliation to both teams, but still, great place to watch a game of football. So second down and 13 in the Valley of the Sun. Two tight end set for Cal. As Rust motions. Rogers throws the ball deep and badly overthrows Chase Lyman, number 15. The NFL's double coverage weekend kicks off Saturday at 8.30 Eastern. League MVP candidate Donovan McNabb leads the Eagles into the nation's capital to take on the Redskins. It all starts with NFL primetime presented by Miller Lite at 8 Eastern. And then on Sunday at 8.30, Jamal Lewis looks to go over 2,000 yards as the Ravens play the Steelers. That coverage begins with NFL primetime presented by Miller Lite. That begins at 7.30 Eastern. Both games available at ESPN. HD. Boy, did the Eagles give away one against the 49ers they that did. hurt their home field throughout the With St. Louis right in the driver's seat. Two of three on third down tonight for Cal. Rogers under pressure, throws the screen out to Arrington. Nobody there to block it. Oh, oh, oh. D'Angelo Hall sniffs it out and another big loss for the Cal offense. And D'Angelo Hall, one-on-one -on -one in the open field. Here's the guy you talked about, Mark. Great punt return man, DB, plays some wide receiver. Kevin Jones already announced he's going to forego his senior year and go into the NFL draft. D'Angelo Hall said after this game, he'll make an announcement on whether he's coming back for his senior year or not. A 4-1-5-40, Mark. That'll have the scouts drooling. School record of Virginia Tech, and he could fly as he goes back from making that play to lining up at midfield to receive the Tyler Fredrickson punt. Fredrickson both does the PAC field goal kicking and the putting. There's a line drive, and it'll be returnable from the 50. Hall runs into trouble and is dragged down at the 49-yard line. A 36-yard punt and a minus one-yard gain. As we take a look at the AOL rushing matchup right now, Ichimondu, as you can see, almost 1,200 yards on the season. Jones has already opted for the NFL, nearly 1,500 yards. We already said at the top of the show, Mike, nearly 125 yards rushing per game and 20 touchdowns. He gets it in the end zone. Well, and Jones has been a household name for a bit, even when he's been splitting time with Lee Suggs, the running back of the Cleveland Browns. Now he's got the stage to himself. Echimondo has been the story, a guy that's been out of ball the last two years and really, really just flashed onto the scene this year. But this is the guy... That's one of the top backs going on into the draft this year. And, and uh, throughout this uh, program, we will start to tell you some of the other backs going in the draft. You just wear Kevin Jones will fit as a late hit penalty was marked off against Cal. Tag McCurdy, number 31 for Cal, came in and had a late hit at the end of that turn. Marcus Good back in the ball game, lined up at the top of your screen, wide left. Randall comes out, the pump fake, and he looks deep for Vick. He's got his man beat. Oh. Touchdown, Hokey. Oh, oh. What a wonderful throw by Brian Randall. 36 yards and a touchdown for Virginia Tech. Wow. Do you think they're picking on the freshman over there and getting it to their athlete? That was the man out there in coverage number 13, Damian Hughes. We saw he had the face mask on Marcus Vick the last time. Virginia Tech had the ball. Great pump fake by Randall, but Hughes didn't get beat that much, Mark. But Vic just ran by him in a fantastic throw. See, Hughes doesn't bite too much. He's still got him in his sights, but just a fantastic throw by Randall. Hughes got his first start of the season against USC, started four games, but 
again, could not catch Marcus Vick when he turned up the field. As Marley sends the extra point to the upright. And all of a sudden, Cal, who started off with a touchdown on their first possession, is in jeopardy of losing sight of this one. Virginia Tech out to a 21-7 lead with just under a minute left here in the first quarter. Well, there you go, the pump fake, and then Randall just lays it up. We talked about maybe not great accuracy, but certainly has the strength. Hughes doesn't get beat by much, by much, but the accuracy of that pass was just beautiful. Dropped it right into the breadbasket there. Wow. I'll tell you, if he doesn't remind you of his brother, Michael Vick, I don't know who does. Well, what will happen next year as we see Vick again with the catch? Randall's going to be a senior next year, and Vick is just a redshirt freshman. They'll compete in spring. <laughs> <with> these two <laughs> having a little fun out there. They'll compete in spring, and if Marcus Vick wins a quarterback job, obviously he'll be on the field. If Randall wins it or, or keeps his job, you know Marcus Vick will be back out in the field in whatever fashion just because they want him out there touching the ball. And for Frank Beamer, if that should happen, he has to understand, and Marcus has to understand that for two years, his junior and senior year, he will be starting quarterback right. for this Virginia Tech football team. Nice problem to have, huh? It certainly <laughs> is. So Worley kicks it deep. And it's out of bounds. The very steady kicker makes a mistake here, and Cal will finally get some pretty good field position as Frank Beamer and Beamer Ball just yeah. looks on and, well, what are you doing? Well, and he is the special Kick teams man. Well, we place the 35-yard line. First down. When you say Beamer Ball, you're talking about special teams, and they have been the best for a number of years, and that's his baby special teams. And he takes charge of it, and you can see he is not happy with that. That's a bad mistake. You mentioned Beamer Ball, his special teams since he arrived. 33 touchdowns, 87 total oh. touchdowns in 200 games. Unbelievable what this guy can get out of his special teams. Certainly Jeff Tedford and the Cal special teams were aware of that this week. You see the hand signals? That is Rodgers trying to change routes with the receivers. Under pressure, pulls it down and maybe gets a yard or two for D'Angelo Hall closes in on him and drops it for the stop. Well, here's the thing. Now, Cal is averaging 170 yards rushing, the first, leading the Pac-10. They're leading USC by about seven yards. So they've been able to pound the ball, but Virginia Tech not letting them do that tonight. And Jeff Tepfer, the head coach, loves to be balanced. But Virginia Tech has taken them out of being balanced with players like D'Angelo Hall. Shepard said one thing you'll see is those safeties on rundowns playing up around linebacker depth, trying to force you to throw the football. Michael Crawford fakes the blitz and then drops out. They come out and throw. The ball is intended for Lyman, but a mistake as Vincent Fuller, the corner, reads it perfectly. I think they missed Jeff MacArthur a little bit. I think they missed Jeff MacArthur. Why would you, Mike? Yeah. 1,500 yards, 10 touchdowns. I mean, the guy was just tremendous. When you're second only to Larry Fitzgerald in the country at the wide receiver spot. That's a big loss. Yeah, MacArthur's been unbelievable all the way back to high school, senior in high school, and led the nation in receiving yards at just under 1,800 with 91 receptions. <laughs> this guy was almost born to catch the football. Two of four on the night at third down situations for Cal. Rogers buys some time, throws the ball deep to line, and it just off his fingertips. He had the junior wide receiver from Los Altos who was filling in for MacArthur open on the scramble, but D'Angelo Hall left him in the dust, but it goes off his fingertips. That brings up fourth and nine, and right now, the count started out quick, but now it's just inches away. 21-7, Cal. presentation of ESPN Bowl Week. That's Marcus Vick, who scored one of the three touchdowns already this evening for Virginia Tech, who got off to a slow start, but now lead by two touchdowns as we begin the second quarter. Fredrickson beats the punt for Cal. D'Angelo Hall beats the receive for Virginia Tech. Oh, a deep spiraling oh. kick. Hall back and fields it at the 15 and drops immediately. 
by Steve Levy. Not our own Steve Levy at ESPN, but Steve Levy of Cal. 48 yards on the punt, no return. Well, let's see if they can, Cal can have a good defensive stop here and maybe change field position a little bit for this offense. They need it because on Cal's first drive, Mark, they went 79 yards and got it into the end zone. Their last two drives, they got minus five yards. So defense may need to help them out here, give them a little better field position. Jeff Tedford going deep into his game plan right there. Needs the defense to step up now. They have been ineffective in the last three drives for Virginia Tech. Jones gets the ball off the right side again. Makes the first man miss and is off to the race. He's down the right side. Finally forced out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Donnie McCleskey, the strong safety, was there to make the play, but counted 42 yards on the game for Jones. What a great job of Jones breaking it to the outside. He gets out. Francis Blimeza, the outside backer, he's able to bounce outside of him. You'll see number 19, he'll bounce right outside as he comes in, steps out. There's Blimeza, he's going around, and he gets the corner. He doesn't run out of bounds. He loves the stiff arm. Kevin Jones wants to hit you with his hand. <laughs> and every other part of his body. So first and 10 from the 42, and Randall comes back throwing the ball. Wilford catches it at the 32-yard line. James Bathia is there to make the stop right about the first down marker as we take a look at our ESPN game track here. Cal's opening drive, as you mentioned, Mike, 79 yards, and Roger Perkins, three for three on that drive, the big bootleg. And then, of course, the big play here as Randall gets, yep, gets the reception then he gets the face mask then they come in here Randall with the run into the end zone and then a beautiful pop and fake and go from Randall to Marcus Vick first and ten now Jones out of the shotgun oh. takes the handoff and picks his way down to about the 22 yard line before Ryan Gutierrez the free safety is there to make the play Nine yards on the pickup. Well, we talk about Jones a lot. Let's start, to, and you mentioned him earlier, you call them the big uglies, and yeah, okay, they are. That old line, four of the five are 300 or better on that Virginia Tech offensive line, of course, led by Jake Grove, and you see Kevin Jones just tucks in behind him. He's not even getting touch marks to the second level. John's on the right tackle, 6'7", 343. <laughs> Hate to see that grocery bill. Second and one now for Virginia Tech. Jones, the handoff to the right side. Overdone, and that'll be a loss of one. Josh Beckham, the nose tackle, was there first for the Golden Bears. Well, they've got Cal in a tough situation. Cal can't load it up to stop Kevin Jones because Randall's completing passes behind him. So they're kind of in no man's land now. In, in a game like this, you, you mentioned the chess game early on. It's who can dictate to who. And right now, that Virginia Tech offense is dictating to the Cal defense. Cal defense isn't sure what's coming. And I think it starts with the quarterback, Brian yep. Randall. He has struggled down the stretch. They've moved Marcus Vick in and out of the lineup, but tonight, Randall has been sharp. Hamilton in motion. The play action again. Pressure. Randall sidesteps, looks for the end zone. Had Hamilton, but he gets tied up with a defensive back, Gutierrez. And that'll fall incomplete. No, that's a, that's a good no call. They, their, their feet got tied up. That's not a penalty. Good call. One that Cal needed. They've seen too many big ones go by him. You see their feet tie up. That's not pass interference. Good no call by the refs there. Well, let's try a field goal. This will be a 40-yard attempt for Warley. From this distance, he's one of two. His longest of the year, 43 yards. Oh, that was awful. And that was pulled badly to the left side. So Warley misses his first attempt for Virginia Tech. And Cal will take over, trailing 21-7. Well, out here in the great southwest, there's a little country western hint to the happy holidays. The inside bowl, Virginia Tech leading 21-7 over Cal. Santa good to you? Santa's always good to me, my man. You know why how Santa was good to me? I'm here doing this game. <laughs> I'm it's in Arizona. It's and cold back in the Northeast right now. <laughs> Sold out crowd here at the Bob for this inside bowl. 
Cal desperately needing to put a drive together. First and 10 from the 23. They come outside, throw the ball out to David Gray on the hit screen. He'll pick up maybe two yards on the play. Eric Green, the redshirt junior corner, making the play for Virginia Tech. If you're joining us, it is the Inside Bowl, California and Virginia Tech. The Hokies up 21-7 from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm Mark Malone, along with Mike Golick. Rob Stone is joining us as our sideline reporter. As you look at the total yards, dominated by the big play of the Hokies. Remember, Cal got 79 yards in their first drive, so you see what they've done since. <laughs> they lost, they gave back a couple. Second down and seven. Solar in motion. Ichimandu was stood up immediately by Blake Warren and Jimmy Williams. We'll call it two on the game. Boy, lucky to get to. This is, again, Virginia Tech strength and something that got away from them, and all these players know it. And the coaching staff has made a, uh, a real, real impression, as Bud Foster, the D coordinator there, that you guys better play this game. We'll be watching film. We'll be grading film. And if you're not a senior, but you're next in line to pick up a spot, your job is not guaranteed. This game is going to be an evaluation of how you finish the season. Foster here since 1995 with the Virginia Tech Hokies. Third down. Rogers pressures out of the pocket. Plenty of room to the 40, the 45, and forced out of bounds at midfield. D'Angelo Hall finally came off the covers, but we'll call it 24 yards on the scramble for Rogers. Well, in that situation, Mark, it looked to me like it was a type of a man free where everybody was running with their their respective wide receivers. The only one free is the free safety. He finally comes back into the play. Bud Foster, <laughs> guys, it's not the defense yeah. I call. That's <laughs> not the defense I call. Smart play by Rodgers. Again, he has the, the strong arm, not known for so much running, but he saw a lot of green there, and he knew he had to move the stick. 23 yards since that opening 79-yard drive for Cal. Strain comes in motion. They fake the reverse and hand the ball off inside Ichimandu. We get it close to the 45-yard line. Vegas Robinson will make the stop after a three-yard game. Robinson, a big, big linebacker at 250. Really interesting. You see the linebackers nowadays in college and the NFL. Sometimes you don't see them as big, 230, 235, but can run like the wind. Robinson at six foot and 250 pounds, the senior. He can certainly suffer from tackle to tackle. He certainly can. A big, big man who said this week, listen, this is not only about this year and this bowl game and trying to write things, but it's about next year. We're moving into the ACC. Right. These guys are going to be going, the youngsters will be going into a lot of different places. The play is J.J. Harrington now comes into the backfield for Ichimandu. And he gets the ball out to the left side, cuts it back, and has a hole. And he'll get up near the first yard down mark. We'll call it the 39-yard line, a gain of six. And Robinson, the big linebacker, is there to make the stop first. Boy, this is something Cal could use if they could get a little bit of that running game going now. Good job, patience with running and cutting back. See the play starting deep. That's supposed to give the running back the opportunity if he sees a hole anywhere to take it. And that time, Arrington saw it in the cutback behind the linebacker, Jordan Trott, and picked up close to the first down. This drive has accumulated six playing so far for Jeff Tedford. The third down conversions, three of six on the day for Cal as they go up inside. The Mandarino, the fullback, a quick trap, and it catches Virginia Tech off guard. Crawford and Hall are there to make the stop after a 10-yard game. I love fullbacks. Yes, I just love <laughs> fullbacks because they don't get to carry the ball a lot. So when they carry it, you know, they're just going to churn those legs and get everything they can out of it. Watch the legs never stop. He's hit right there. Boom, at the line of scrimmage by Jordan Trapp. But the legs are going, chopping, chopping. That's a great job. Like I said, they don't get the bone handed to them much. When they get it, they take advantage of it. Mandarino's father played defensive end and fullback at Michigan State. His rough motions. Roger Got step up inside, has the post wide open. It's Tuller, touchdown, Cal. Number 15, a 33-yard pass completion from Rodgers to Lyman, and Cal, just like that, back on the board. Well, and just like that, and you wonder what makes plays sometimes, Mark, and this time it was number one, Eric Green fell down, 
And when you fall down, all of a sudden you're wide open. Rogers just needed to get it to him for the easy score. Lyman, we mentioned, replacing Jeff MacArthur, the nation's number two wide receiver. As Fredrickson lines up for the extra point. Kicks it through, and we've got a one-touchdown football game now. Bontek leading 21-14 after the Chase Lyman touchdown. Green falls down, touchdown Cal, and Aaron Rodgers is in the end zone twice. presentation of the 2003 Insight Bowl, presented by Insight, your single source for IT products and services, and in part by City Identity Theft Solution. Free help getting your life back. That's using your card wisely. And GM Goodrich, home of Mr. Goodrich, the one and only GM expert. Phoenix, Arizona, the inside ball as we look at Chase Lyman taking over for Jeff MacArthur and he's had a tough time of it, guys. That's his replacement again, MacArthur, but we mentioned Lyman has an appendectomy, torn hamstring, misses his first couple years, wanted to have ankle yeah. surgery earlier this year and Jeff Tedford said, wait a second, I might need you. Well, it turns out they did need him and he comes up big. And he needs it and he's going to have ankle surgery in three days. On the 29th of December, the kick deep, Emo will take it about eight yards deep and take a knee as we take a look again at the Cal touchdown and again you mentioned green falling down yeah nothing fancy here I mean it was just coverage and green fell down and Roger saw he had him wide open just laid it up for him got to be an incredibly nervous situation for a guy that Lyman coming into the game only had seven receptions he's wide open and the ball's coming down right to him I can tell you one thing I had one reception for one touchdown a 90 yarder in the NFL and I beat the corner clean, and all I could think about was don't drop this football. It was the longest flight in football in my entire NFL career, and I know exactly what Lyman was thinking about. So Randall comes out on the bootleg for Vontek, throws the ball, intended for King, but he can't hold on at about the 30-yard line. So you got 99 yards for a touchdown? 90. One touchdown, one game. I started one game. One touchdown reception, 90 yards a touchdown. Still the longest touchdown nobody, reception in, in Steeler history. Nobody caught you? No, nobody caught me. Nobody Come was going to catch me now. I know you weren't that fast. What, I, did, they all, did they all do an Eric Green there and fall down? No, buddy. I had the fastest 40 time on the team. In fact, when I bring it up occasionally to Lynn Swan, he's not a happy camper still. Wow. The guy's in the Hall of Fame, and he's not in the record book. <laughs> Kevin Jones. Marcus Vick at quarterback out of the shotgun will take it on the draw and he's dropped it about the 23 yard line after a gain of three Gutierrez the free safety is first there for the Golden Bears and we talked about Vic when he gets in the game at quarterback he's only thrown the ball 56 times completed 30 of them five interceptions to go along with two touchdowns so not really there yet obviously as a quarterback but he's an athlete and that's why they want him on the field look at the, Brian Randall out there blocking. He's a big kid. 6'1", 221. He's not afraid to mix it up out there. Nobody sticks to one position anymore, do they? <laughs> Third down and six. And the officials stop the clock. So while they try to figure out the penalty situation, we'll step aside, take a break. Back right after this. Side bowl. Pac-10 and Big East football as the Cal Golden Bears find themselves down a touchdown to Virginia Tech. 8.20 remaining here in the first half. And it's been a lot about big plays, but Virginia Tech now faces a third and six to go. They are three of four on third down conversions tonight, Mike. See a big one here on both sides. If Cal can get a stop here, they can end up with some pretty good field position. King, the tight end, shifts to the right side. Emo in motion. A late shift by Cal and Randall. The plane looking for the screen and nothing there. Here comes the cavalry then. He dumps it out at the last second to Jones, who gets up over the 30-yard line and up for a first down. Harrison Smith 
is there for the stop. Seven yards, and let's move the chain. Well, Randall, they, they, Cal did a great job of stopping the screen, so Randall rolls out and then just says, basically, here, Kevin, you do something with it. <laughs> and he does. Tremendous play. I thought it was a dead play. Yeah, going to screen left. Cal does a nice job getting out there, so Randall does what he does. He's mobile, and then the little flip. We've seen this more often now. He's flipping out. Randall takes a shot for his work. But it's first down. Bly Misa had Randall in his sights, ignored Jones completely, and so the screen goes for the first down. Jones gets the carry and hit immediately for a loss. It's going to be a no gain. Bly Misa was there first. The outside linebacker, the J.C. transfer. Well, he was there when the hunter was there, and you thought they had him dead to rights about a yard or two behind the line, but Kevin Jones is enough just to get back to the line of scrimmage. But that's good run defense by Cal. That's something they got to do is put Virginia Tech in Cal type of situation, and second and ten would be that. Cedric Humes now in the backfield at running back for Jones. Randall changes the play. Humes up inside for about three yards on the play. Tosh LaFoy is there first for Cal. Capital One Bowl Week continues this Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern on ESPN2. His highest bid runner-up, Larry Fitzgerald, leads the Panthers into Charlotte to take on quarterback Matthew Schwab and the Virginia Cavaliers. For more information, you can log on to ESPN.com. Schwab over 2,700 yards passing this year. Yeah. 17 touchdowns. Pretty good season. He's had a fantastic year. Third and seven now for the Hokies. And here comes the blitz. They throw the football out to Richard Johnson, who breaks the tackle and finally trips up at the 41-yard line by Ryan Gutierrez. 25 yards on the reception and run. That's a lot of room. Harrison Smith, number 11, gave Johnson on the with the blitz coming. You know he's going to get rid of the ball. You got the blitz. Pressure's going to come. And number 11, Harrison, is way off the ball. Johnson does a name knee, never hit the ground. Good job of keeping, keeping it alive and making more out of the play. But when that blitz is coming, you've got to have tighter coverage. Marcus Vick now back in the ball game, lined up as a wide receiver at the top of your screen. Wide right. Again, the pump fake and the deep ball to Vick. And he's down at the 10-yard line. James Bethia falls for another double move, and it's good for 31 yards. Incredible, and no safety help there at all. Randall starts moving to the outside. The safeties come up, and Vic even gets in behind them. First, there's the pump, fake pump outside. He's going down the field. No safeties anywhere for help. Bethia gets beat on the inside. <laughs> Three nice receptions, play. 80 yards, and a touchdown. He is a playmaker. They come out and run the option. The toss outside of Jones. And he's got first down. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. 11 yards on the run. And the Virginia Tech offense is so multiple. They can throw it. They can run it. And then they option you down inside the 10. Absolutely fantastic execution. Jones will go over and shake the hand of his fullback, Doug Eastlick, who threw the key block. Randall hangs on to the ball just to the last minute. He gets hit when he pitches it. That was a perfect option for a team that doesn't run a lot of options. Early on now for the extra point. Right through the middle. Virginia Tech now up by two touchdowns with 5-16 remaining here in the second as we take a look at the big play that set it up the pump and go to marcus vick down to the 10-yard line that was good for 31 and then jones goes in and we have a two touchdown game check up now 28 14 with 5 16 remaining kevin jones another touchdown off of the option he has eight plays 80 yards 354 on the drive the touchdown run 11 yards is two third down conversions very critical in that drive well i'll tell you everybody's been getting into the action randall good throws 11 of 14 at this point 
Vic doing a nice job running his route, and Kevin Jones running the ball extremely well. Arrington takes it from the six. And it'll be tackled at about the 28-yard line, a return of 21 yards for the Golden Bears. And that's where they'll take over now with 509 remaining here in this first half. Well, you know who it's on. It's on Aaron Rodgers. You know, he's got to lead this team. The running game hasn't really been going until the last drive. They got a little bit of running going. And Rodgers threw the ball well, got a break there when Eric Green, the defensive back for Vatek, fell down. Six different receivers he's gone to tonight in seven completions. The Jumondu, the Sloan back for Cal. Come out strong. Toller on the hitch. Almost breaks the tackle and then ridden out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Eric Green and Aaron Rouse were there on the stop. Well, we talked about Marcus Vick, and if he's not, if he's not under center, he's going to be somewhere, and he's been split out much of the night. Set the hitch there, gets the face mask penalty against him. The pitch and go there for the touchdown. Another pump and go here to set up yet another score by Kevin Jones. <laughs> Randall been working on that, I think. <laughs> Second down and seven out for Cal. Mitch Strain on the motion. It gets it on the reverse with a lead blocker, but Hall defeats the block and then rustles down straying at the 36-yard line, but flags on the play, and it looks like a face mask. Yeah, D'Angelo Hall's going to get the face mask here. We'll see it's a 15-yard or not. The way the ref threw the flag, I have a feeling it might be. Strang, an inspirational player, 150 pounds. That's yeah, going to be a big one against Virginia Tech, but you're right. 150 pounds, you'll see, here comes... Hall gets that left hand up on the face mask, pulls to see the head turn, that's a 15-yarder. Strange, 150. Last year, he was 137 pounds. My 13- and 14-year-olds are bigger than he is. Strange says, hey, listen, I don't care who you are, D'Angelo Hall. Oh. Get your hand off my face mask. Exactly, you gotta love that. He was voted most inspirational on this football team, and again, five touchdowns, a little bit like Wayne Corbett, only small. Only oh, small. <laughs> I, I don't know anybody in college that's smaller than that. That's just unbelievable. What? You know what? Can never measure what's in a man's no. chest. He's got a big heart. There's yep. no doubt about that. So the chains move. First and ten now for Cal. It's Mondu. Nothing off the left side. No gain as we check back in with Rob Stone. Rob? Well, guys, to add to the uh, Vinny Strang fun, you know, Bears defensive tackle Lorenzo Alexander. When he was eight years old, he weighed 140 pounds, which was <laughs> three pounds more than Strang checked in last year you know strength showed up as a walk-on came up to tedford and tedford looked at him like yeah, i don't even think this kid is in college much less probably high school didn't believe him but he came on bulked up put on a quick 13 pounds and now <laughs> now he's just obese i mean he's out of shape out of weight at 58 150. course can change directions in his second and ten and rogers works it outside to chase lyman who gets out to the 40 yard line d'angelo hall makes the play after a nine yard game how about that? A guy that's eight years old weighing 100? That sounds like one of your kids. Yeah, you're not kidding. <laughs> you're not kidding. I, I, I'm glad my kids weren't on the field before the game with me. When we met Lyman, I'd have felt bad. They're so much bigger than he is. But again, you know, that guy's going to run the routes. He's going to stick his head in there. He's going he's gonna to try and make the plays. That's why his teammates voted the most inspirational. It's a great story. Yeah, and there's something to be said about a guy like that working in the slot, changing directions. When you get double coverage, that is to his advantage. Yep. They bring out the chains for a measurement. Oh, short. just an inch or two. Got to make sure you move the chains here. We're going to start to talk about Aaron Rodgers a little bit because he's the one leading this offense, making the throws to these guys, Mark. And you watch him go back in that. You were a quarterback, obviously, for what seems like 40 years. <laughs> but you Easy watch, there, you watch the technique, and, and Jeff Tedford is the, the quarterback guru, the, the guys he's coached. But just the ball's up all the time. Yes. The technique is right. The feet are good. The feet move. He's just fundamentally sound in everything he does. Tedford said, this guy gets it. He said, you know what? He's got all the tools. He's smart. The difference between he and Reggie Roberts, when you put him on the field and he completely got a grasp of the offense, is he sees everything. He understands what's going on and manages the game as well as anybody he's coached. And Tedford said he sat down Reggie Roberts in the backup and just basically explained to him, listen, you're doing a nice job, but this kid 
this kid's a player, you know, and he's going to have to go in there. And to Robertson's credit, he, he understood that, and he's been a great team guy. Four of seven on third downs, and they go back inside. The Mandolino, the fullback, good for two yards, and that'll be a first down. Cal will move the chains. Let's check in with Reese Davis in the studio. Reese? All right, Mark, so that was Mark May here with me coming up on the Dodge Halftime Report. It was a high-octane Motor City Bowl. And I'll let you know if Virginia's defense can contain Pittsburgh wide receiver Larry Fitzgerald in tomorrow's Continental Tire Bowl. And we'll talk about second-half adjustments, what Cal can do to get back into this football game. Reason. It might include tackling. No half-stepping. Better bring your feet and arrive with bad intentions. We're back after this. All right, Reese. <laughs> give us a chance to freshen up and look forward to the second half. This is going to be a barn burner, I believe. Going to throw it, throwing the ball. Ichimandu cuts it back and goes to the left side. Rogers leading the block. Ichimandu gets about a yard, maybe two, on the play before he's tackled by Michael Crawford, the roving safety. If you're just joining us here in Phoenix, Arizona, it is the Insight Bowl, California and Virginia Tech. And we've got a good one here with lots of points. Mark Malone along with Mike Golick and Rob Stone down on the field. As we take a look at the total yards in this football game with 301 remaining here in the first half. And Virginia Tech is dominated because of the big plays, yeah. Mike. Yeah, they have hit Marcus Vick deep uh, on a couple of those. Cal had a nice first drive, then they kind of went away for a bit as Vitek's defense really put the hammer on it. But these last couple of drives, Cal's been moving the ball. So the halfback pass doesn't work. Second and nine now for Paul Rogers. Inside and drills one to Toler, who's down at the 20-yard line. And you see Toller, but if you get a look back at Rogers, Rogers was mad at himself because he knew he had him wide open, and if he hit him in stride, he'd still be running. But the throw is low. He goes down, makes a nice catch, and I love the reaction of Rogers, Mark. He just slapped his hands together, and he said, doggone it. I, knew it's, I know it's a completion, but we could have had more if I had a better throw. Great catch by Toller. Sometimes when you see a guy open quickly, you can't get your feet, your body going in the same direction. The ball comes up a little short. It's enough to move the chains, however. Rogers looks down the seam and then finally just throws it away. Chase Lyman, he had locked up man-to-man -man on the left side, but Lyman could not cut loose of Eric Green. The so Rogers throws it away right now. Rogers 10 of 14 for a buck 25 so far this first half and a touchdown. Well, one of the differences we've seen, especially on pump fakes, Mark is Virginia Tech, most notably Marcus Vick, getting separation not happening with these Cal receivers. They're not getting that same separation at this point, especially on those outside routes. Tedford said this is how he evaluates quarterbacks. First and foremost, mental and physical toughness. Second, intelligence. Then their escapability. The final thing he measures? Arm strength, which that? I thought yeah. was interesting. It's down the line a little bit. Harrington now in the backfield for Ichimondu, and Rogers back to throw. Throws the outside, uh, and it's dropped. John Russ, the tight end, was outside working on the corner route and had a step on the defender, but the ball is dropped. Aaron Rouse is on defense there, and he's, he's very, very happy <laughs> to hang on to the ball because that ball was there. What a beautiful mm. throw. Mm -mm. Rust only came into the night with three receptions. Came to Cal as a wide receiver, now a tight end, and he's going to be thinking about that one. Harrington, the lone setback for the Golden Bear. Rogers, son of the blitz, dumps it out to Harrington. Got he's got blockers inside the 10, makes the man miss, and tackled at about the seven yard line by Kevin Lewis. A gain of 12, and that should be enough for another first down. You want to talk about plays that work perfectly against the defense call? That was it. You saw Vitek, Virginia Tech really coming after him. They just swing it out there, and there's a lot of space for Arrington to run. Bud Foster now trying to figure out this Cal offense. He had them figured out for two or three series, but the Golden Bears now have come roaring back. They started out at their own 29. They've already run 10 plays for 63 yards and gobbled up three minutes and 21 seconds. They now have first and goal from the eight-yard line. Play action again. Rodgers can't see anything, and he's going to be pulled down at about the 13-yard line. First one there, Nathaniel Adibi, a loss of five yards on the play. As you mentioned, Adibi making his fourth straight bowl start. 
Gets to Russ Rogers. I'm sure would have liked the place to throw the ball away. Didn't would not want to take the sack. Started to try and roll out left. His pass got cut off, and as soon as he stopped, there was a DB to make sure he didn't go any farther. The DB came into this game a team-high 19 quarterback hurries, just four and a half sacks, now five and a half sacks. Echimondu back in the ball game and running back now as Cal lines up in three wide receivers. Rogers looks inside, has his tight end and hit immediately. Aaron Rouse was there to put the helmet on the tight end. John Rust and what looked to be, might be, a big play ended up an incomplete. That was a great job by Rouse. That's what you're taught to do, separate man from ball, Mark, and that's exactly what he did. He timed it perfectly. It's going to come right into your living room here, right down the middle of the field. There's the ball to Russ. Rouse makes the hit. Ball comes out. Ball's in the air almost with a shot to get it picked off. Rouse making up a little bit there for the little bit of lack of coverage on Russ when Russ dropped that ball. Rouse had pretty good coverage, but Russ should have caught it. A couple plays ago. Because of the sack, third and goal now from the 13. Harrington in the backfield. Oh. And they've got him wide open. The angle in by the halfback. He cuts down Golden Bear. 13 yards on the play, and this looked like an old San Francisco 49er play to the fullback angle it in. Spread everybody out and throw it in the middle of the field, and that was wide open. you got to think there was a, a coverage bust there, Mark. The middle of the field should not be that wide open, not with a back in the backfield. Harrington out of the College of the Canyons, the 5'11", 215-pound junior. Fredrickson now for the extra point. Straight through the middle. And J.J. Harrington in relief for Ichimandu. Finds himself wide open, catches the football and scores, and we have ourselves a football game. 28-21, Virginia Tech. Oh, California is going to make it a seven-point game. Virginia Tech leading 28-21. 30 seconds remaining here at the first half. J.J. Harrington ends up being wide open on a busted defensive play to score. 13 plays, 71 yards. Again, the Harrington catch, 13-yard touchdown. His sixth touchdown of the season. And the little pooch kick by Fredrickson. The fair caught at the 31-yard line. One of the two were calling for a fair catch. Well, one was called for the fair catch, the other caught it, but it's still a fair, it's still a fair catch. Play's dead, you can't run with it. We have a fair catch signal, ball was dead, player ran with the football, we got a delay, five yards penalty, first down. Well, no matter which team is number one, the only play to see them, play is on ABC. New Year's Day at 4.30 Eastern Time, the most talked about bowl championship series in history, begins with a Pac-10 Big Ten showdown. It's USC led by quarterback Mike Matt Leinart takes on Chris Perry of the Michigan Wolverines. And, of course, Leinart, 3,200 yards, 35 touchdowns, just nine interceptions. My, that's, that's better than Carson Palmer. Incredible, incredible numbers he's put up. He's got a plethora of athletes to throw to out there. That team is a just an incredible team this year. And we'll get into that whole situation. They come out running the ball. Kevin Jones gets it right up the gut. Dragged down at the 41-yard line by the free safety Gutierrez. 15 yards on the play. Well, all of a sudden, with that long run, may get Virginia Tech calling a timeout, saying, well, wait a minute. Eight rushes, 83 yards. Remember that Cal defense has not given up 100 yards to a runner in its last four games. But then again, they haven't faced a runner like yeah. Kevin Jones. Yeah, you haven't faced one. This guy is something else. I mean, this is nothing fancy here. Straight up the gut again behind that big offensive line. Just a fantastic blocking, really more than running. He just had to run straight ahead. Again, that offensive line consists of Jake Grove, the Remington Award winner at center, the best center in the country. Jacob Gibson is 6'4", 299 at the right guard. 
John Dunn is 6'7", 243 at right tackle. Montgomery is 298 at the left guard, and little Jimmy Martin only weighs 291 at the left tackle. <laughs> little Jimmy Martin. <laughs> and you mentioned they haven't faced a back like that. The one other back they did against Oregon State when they lost to them, 35-21, is Steven Jackson. Big running back from Oregon State. Uh, another guy that's going to be in the NFL draft next year, a junior. And we'll, again, with Kevin Jones, we'll talk about some of the backs that are coming out in the draft this year. Also faced Darren Sprouse, obviously the Kansas, Kansas State, State team they right. struggled with early this season. First and ten now. 25 seconds remaining here in the first half. Cal fakes the blitz and then backs off. Randall. Looks deep, has a seam route, and throws it right by his intended receiver, Chris Shreve. Again here, if they're trying to get in a field goal position, Worley, his long is 43 yards, so they'd have to go an awful long way. They'd have to get to about the 25-yard line or so just to get there, and it's still, it's still a long way to go. They, a little bit of time. Worley missed a 40-yard attempt badly early in this yep. football game. Pulling it hard left. Randall. He's in down the oh. seam and again finds a wide open Richard Johnson. Matt Giordano, the rover, was there to make the play, but let's call it 30 yards on the game. And again, the clock stops until the chains are set. So they're going to run a kill play right here. They'll only lose about a second. As soon as the referee blows the whistle, though, Brian Randall's going to kill it. There it is. It's about a second, maybe two. So now you've gotten <laughs> into field goal range here for Carter Warley, but you probably have enough time to leave. Yeah. take one shot into the end zone. And, and you can even, if you want to get in a better field goal position, you can throw it in the middle of the field as we take a look at the play. A nice play down the middle of the field. Johnson had a big catch early in the game. A little crossing. Finds that hole right there. Big hole there in the secondary. Now they don't have to get all the way to a first down here because they do have another timeout. Cal's defense is running all over the place. They finally call a timeout. Wendell Hunter, the outside linebacker, a late ad runs onto the field, but the timeout called by Sid Slater, the middle linebacker. And they'll try to figure it out on the sideline. Take a look at the season for Virginia Tech. Again, for the fourth straight year, they get off to a 6-0 start. We're ranked as high as number three, but then lost right, over their last six games. They were 2-4, and 1-3 and three on the road. Of course, those losses came to West Virginia, Pittsburgh, Boston College, and Virginia. And in fact, when you go back to West Virginia Pitt, this was a very, very tough ball game. It was very hard fought in this football game. As it went back and forth, yeah. but that fumble right there cost Vontek, and they end up losing a close one. Then Pittsburgh comes back and finds a way to beat them after they had beat Miami the week before. They went 31-28, yep. and that pretty much did it for the Hokies. They had jumped up back to number five after they beat Miami, but then lost three of their last four, and it knocked them out of the polls for the first time in a long time. So, Cal had a chance to straighten it away. Randall points out the potential blockers and blitzers, and here we go. Ten seconds remaining, and here comes the blitz. Randall under pressure, scrambles right, Hunter Chasey can't catch him, the ball incomplete to Emo on the right sideline. Wendell Hunter was there to make the pressure. Well, good job by Randall getting rid of the ball, out of the pocket, you can throw it away so you don't lose any yards, so Worley's going to line it up here. So it looks to be about a 45-yarder, Mark. No, I guess no, take the word about out of it, it's a 45-yarder. 45 45-yarder. 45 Again, his season-long 43. He's had one block this year. Stamp is down and good, and he badly misses this one. Low and left. So Warley, who is 12 of 15 on the season, has missed from 40 and 45 yards. Take another look at this. 
missed him badly too the first one wasn't as bad a hook as this one this just no shot snap was good hold was good kick is just mark, mark flat out awful trying to drive the football Check in with Rob Stone. Rob? Yeah. George Tedford is giving me a hard time because I'm, I'm missing my cameraman here. This Virginia Tech offense is having a lot of success. How can you try and slow it down in the second half? Well, they are. Uh, we need to put some pressure on the pass for number one, and then we need to stay, We need to keep the guys in front of us. We're letting a couple guys get in the secondary deep, and we need to keep them in front of us. Your last offensive drive was very impressive, though. What did you guys see in the Virginia Tech defense? Well, we're just mixing up a little bit. Um, you know, turn of protection, trying to move the pocket a little bit, get it to a lot of different receivers, tight ends, backs, things like that. So we're going to continue to mix it up. Coach, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Well, it's halftime here in Phoenix. Fog Tech leads 28-21 as we check in with Reese Davis, Trent Alberts, and Mark May. And the trends continue to be alive. Glad to have you with us on the Dodge Halftime Report. Favored teams are 7-0 so far in the bowl season. Combined scores averaging 70 points per game. Good of it. And then, uh, you know, in our kicking game, putting us down a little bit right now, but hopefully that'll be better here in the second half. How many premeditated plays did you have for Marcus Vick as a wideout? Oh, it's working out pretty well. Yeah, we got a few. We're going to have a few more, too. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. <laughs> well, surprise, surprise, I would guess. I try to get him the ball as much as you can. He's had a big impact on this football game. Three receptions, 79 yards. Remember, this is the backup quarterback now, brother of Mike Vick, and he has a touchdown on the day as well. You wonder, Mark, uh, certainly, Vic, I'm sure, would like to play quarterback, but what do you think about the future of this? You know, Ernest Wolford, their top receiver, is a senior, mm -hmm. so he's not going to be back. Uh, you know, you, you look around and you wonder, do you play Vic as a wide receiver next year? And I, 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 would, I would say, unless he clearly beats out Brian Randall for the quarterback job, you, you may want to find a way to keep them both on the field. This could be the way. You could. However, again, as we mentioned earlier in the program, Randall struggled off and on this year. Yeah. Vic has gotten a chance to get in and play. This has not been able to outright win the job. Virginia Tech won the toss to get into the game at the first, so they'll receive here in the second half. Tyler Fredrickson, the senior out of Santa Barbara, will kick it off. And deep is Mike Emo and Cedric Hughes. And we are underway here in the second half. Emo from the goal line. Breaks the tackle, out past the 20, he's got some room. Finally, the angles catch up and driven out of bounds at the 40-yard line, a 40-yard return. Tyler Fredrickson, the kickoff man, was there to force Emo out. We take a look at the first half numbers, and again, third down conversions, pretty good by both teams. 7 of 10, 70% for Cal, but 5 of 6 yeah. by Virginia Tech. You'll take both those. I yeah. mean, there's no doubt about it. So... Cal at some point started to get a running game going. We'll see if they do that as well. Virginia Tech lived on that big play. As I said, seven for over 20 yards. Let's see if they really try and establish the run here with Kevin Jones, who had just eight carries in the first half. Jones, a touchdown, has 21, which leads Division 1A football. From the 40, Randall comes out passing, throws the ball over the middle to Shreve. And Shreve gets it out past midfield, a gain of 12 yards. Wendell Hunter. The outside linebacker is there first for the Cal defense. Nice way to start it off. Again, probably Cal expecting that run. You know you're going to get a dose of Kevin Jones, even though it wasn't a ton in the first half. He had a healthy average. Only averaged 10.5 per carry. <laughs> so you know you're going to get, he's going to get the ball. So they move the chains. Another first and 10. Shreve in motion, and here comes the blitz. Jones with the ball over the right side again. Makes the first man miss and then finally drug down by Gutierrez. Perhaps a touchdown saving tackle at the 32-yard line. A 17-yard gain. Now, if you missed the first half action, let's get you caught up with our ESPN game track. Brian Randall, a big first half. 240 yards and two touchdowns. A lot of those yards going to Marcus Vick, the backup quarterback. His first career touchdown catch in this game. And, of course, Rodgers is also a big half, 174 yards of total offense and a touchdown for the Golden Bears. Two tight end formation now. Play action. Out the flat to Wilford, who has some room and is forced out near the 20-yard line by James Bathia. 14 yards on the pickup. 
Well, this is something, and you mentioned it about Brian Randall and his throwing and his inaccuracies at times, something you know he's going to work on in the offseason, because remember now, you're losing Kevin Jones. You lost Lee Suggs last year to the Cleveland Browns. Kevin Jones will be gone, so you wonder, and, I, and you know, the running game, Cedric Humes is the backup right now for Virginia Tech. He's a sophomore, but clearly they'll lose a little bit in the running game, so they may rely more on Randall to, to have to be an accurate pass. Marcus Vick in the game in motion, and they hand the ball off on the reverse, and he's forced wide, and then driven out of bounds at about the 23-yard line by Tosh Lapoy and Donnie McCleskey, the defensive end and safety, minus four on the carry. Sometimes trying to get a guy like Marcus Vick involved in the game, you use trick plays. Sometimes they're big plays, sometimes they backfire. Well, also, when Vick has done what he's done, you know when he's on the field, you have to key in on him. And now you wonder if you start using him a little bit as a decoy. Because every time he's in there, that sometimes they're throwing to him or handing the ball off to him. Maybe you kind of fake it to him a little bit. So three wide receivers on the second down and 14 play. And here comes the speed option, the pitch out to Jones. Cuts it up inside and hit by Gutierrez and Monte Parson. Two yards on the game. Gutierrez, that was a nice open field tackle. We talked about the fact to try and bring Kevin Jones down the first man there. Kevin Jones does a good job of slipping him. Gutierrez, you know, has 81 tackles on the year. Two times this year he's had 13 tackles a game. Now, again, that's not always the greatest thing in the world for your free safety, but in today's football, both college and the pros, you see his safety play up toward the line a heck of a lot more than he used to. Second best to the Big East. They have been near perfect here tonight on third down. This third and long, the pump right, then throws it out to Wilford to the right side, and he's finally driven out of bounds at about the 11-yard line. It'll be a couple yards short of a first down. Josh Beckham was there on the tackle. Nine yards on the pickup. Well, here it is. You're a couple yards short of the first down. Your field goal kicker has missed him horribly. You wonder, do you go for it or do you let this kid, you're up seven here, maybe get a short one here, try and build a little confidence back. And that looks like exactly what they're going to do. Again, the two that he had missed from 40 and 45 were longer field goal attempts. His longest of the season, 43 yards. From this point right here, we're looking at about 29 yards. He is 6 of 7 from this range. Kingsley, Stamper. Oh, he did it again. And he misses it again. That three missed field goals now on the day for Carter Worley. I'm telling you, you got to wonder what's going to happen as this game goal comes down to the end. If Cal keeps it close, Mark. Frank Beamer cannot imagine what is going on, and Cal will get another shot trailing by a touchdown. Across America is the season to celebrate college football. From city to city, the passion is unrivaled. Coast to coast and beyond, the nation comes alive for Capital One Bowl Week. Back at the Bob, Phoenix, Arizona, the inside bowl, California trailing Virginia Tech by a touchdown. 12.56 remaining as you take a look at Carter Worley. He came into this game 12 of 15, 80% for field goals. Tonight, 0 for 3. Misses a 40, 45, and most recently, 29 yards. Cal takes over at the 20. Each man do. The lone setback. Play action. Rogers. Dumps it down. Dijamondu picks up a block and out to the 30-yard line before he's driven out of bounds by Mikel Backey, the middle linebacker, a gain of 10. Well, that's one of the stats you saw when we put the halftime stats up was yards after the catch. And Cal had 79, and here you add on to that. And this is what you need your receiver to do if you catch a short pass. You need them to avoid the first tackler. That's what he's able to do, avoiding Bucky. Javon moves the chain. Should mention as well that Rodgers just needs 307 yards to become the second all-time single-season passer in Cal history. First and ten. It's Javon Lunges forward for four yards as we check back in with Rob Stone. Rob? Well, guys, Aaron Rodgers takes a bit of Joe Montana out onto the field with him every time he plays. Underneath his pads is a well-worn Joe Montana t-shirt that he stole years ago 
from his brother. Now, his whole family enamored with the 49ers, but it was that 89 Super Bowl winning drive versus the Cincinnati Bengals, which made Montana Rodgers idle. But there's some unfinished business between the two. Rodgers has never met Joe Montana. He was yelling at me yesterday, hey, put in a good plug for me. So, Joe, you're on <laughs> the clock. <laughs> Montana like numbers early from Mr. Rogers. He shows great boy. Harrington with the ball was out near midfield before he's tackled by Michael Crawford. We'll call it a gain of 15 yards for the Golden Bears. Nice, nice run by Arrington. Again, he'll take over for Etchimandu. Etchimandu leaving, and Arrington will take over. Nice pull. There by Marvin Phillips, the center. Again, the big guys out on the loose. Get those centers pulling, opening up the hole for Arrington. Nice run. You mentioned Marvin Phillips, the most improved offensive line award. As Edgemondu now back in as Arrington heads for the sideline. Rust in motion. Rogers back to throw again, and he looks for the flag. Deep Lyman catches it and finally tackled it about the 12-yard line. Michael Crawford there is to save the touchdown. We saw earlier a defensive back falling down, and it happened again. Well, and I'll tell you what, though, the throw right there. Mark, you talked about Jeff Tetford and his priorities in a quarterback, and fourth was arm strength. Well, you know what? His arm strength's not fourth on his list. It's pretty darn good. He puts this one on a rope. Right out to Lyman, an excellent job. As you see, just a deep out. Ball right on the money, in stride, continue to run. Picks up another 15 to 18 yards after the catch. Lyman replacing Jeff MacArthur has three catches already tonight for 89 yards. A little shovel play. Ichimandu makes a tackler miss inside the five and down at about the four-yard line by D'Angelo Hall. We'll call it a gain of eight. Ichimandu now making those first people avoid like Kevin Jones had been doing for Virginia Tech. Getting a little shuffle pass here. That is a pass, forward pass. Breaks it to the outside. Little scoop move there on Brandon Manning. And just like they did the opening drive of this football game where they marched it down the field and put seven up quick, they have been near perfect in this drive. And Joe Montana would be proud of the way Aaron <laughs> Rodgers is leading this offense down the field. We'll get him to call you, Aaron, somehow, someway. <laughs> Cal goes with two tight ends. The split wide receiver's right, and they hand it off to the foot fullback over the left side, and Mandarino cuts down Cal. Chris Mandarino, the sophomore out of Newport Harbor High School, scores his first touchdown of the season. And he's, as a fullback, you don't get a lot of chances in the end zone, but as a high school senior, he scored 31 of them, so he's been to pay dirt before. Now gets there in college. And oh, does this make it interesting with three missed field goals for Virginia Tech. <laughs> that was Redrickson. The extra point, it's up, and it's good. So Mandarino. A happy man after scoring his first touchdown. He came into this game with just 10 rushing attempts. He gets into the end zone and gets Cal. Back in the ball game, 28-28, Virginia Tech with 10-16 remaining. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2003 Insight Bowl. Presented by Insight, your single source for IT products and services. And in part by the next Ford F-150, 2004 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. And come in, Nicoderm CQ and Nicorette. When you're ready, we can help. Back at the Bank One Ballpark, yes. Mandarino scores his first touchdown of the season from the fullback spot to make this a tie ball game. Six plays, 80 yards, 240 it took. Lyman, the big 40-yard reception. Of course, Chase Lyman replacing Jeff MacArthur, the injured wide receiver. As Fredrickson sends it deep, back to catch it is Cedric Hughes. And he's tackled. In 
inside the 20. We'll call it about the 17-yard line. 13 yards on the return, and Ryan Gutierrez, the starting free safety, is there for the Golden Bear. Well, you wonder if we have a little momentum change here, Mark. You know, Virginia Tech drives down, missed their third field goal. Cal goes right down the field and scores in a beautiful drive, and what we, we see Emo get some nice kickoff returns this, uh, already this game. He doesn't touch the ball here, and now inside the 20 for Virginia Tech. So, the Hokies start deep inside the 20. They fake the reverse after handing the ball off. Jones up inside. He'll take it up to about the 25-yard line before Tom Sperich makes the play seven yards on the game. Well, and Mark, you as a quarterback for so long, talk about seven yards here. Virginia Tech averages 6.4 per, per, per first down. Mm -hmm. So here you go, second down three, second down four. As a quarterback, that's got to make your, your mouth water a little bit. Jones over the 100-yard mark, 11 carries for a buck 10 so far tonight, with 9.40 remaining here in the third. Throw it out to Emo on a little bubble screen. And Emo makes three or four tackles miss. Finally dragged down by Dante Hughes, the corner, seven yards on the pickup. Nice job getting the ball out. You get Lyman out in front. Jake Grove came from the center position to make a block there on the outside. We talked to him uh, about him a lot tonight. All right, he's the best center in the land. But these centers that are able to move and get to the outside, it's just incredible. The one of the best, Kevin Mawai from the Jets. Mm -hmm. uh, with 315 pounders able to move. That's what pro scouts are looking for, and they see all that in Jake Grove. He can block anywhere on the field, especially when you cover up both of those guards, and there's a bubble over that center, and he's free to pull if he's got speed. Cal shows the blitz handoff. Jones, he bounces it out to the left side, and we'll call it about the 43-yard line. Donnie McCleskey is there on the play, and again, Jones showing the kind of speed that he was known for a year yeah. ago. Well, and what impresses me is, is his versatility, his ability to, to be patient, play behind his blocks, do the cutback, or there, you know, get the corner on Blymiza, on the outside backer who was there, but all of a sudden Jones says, all right, I need speed this time around, and he just takes the corner. Again, you see the comparison between Jones and Echimandu, and Echimandu in this Cal offense, 170 yards rushing, number one in the Pac-10, first time that's happened since 1958, when Joe Camp was the leader of that Cal Golden Bear team. And they're trying to hold on to it because in second place is USC. Mm. And since obviously bowl games count, so it'll be right. after these bowl games to see if they finish number one. Certainly uh, not rushing the ball very well tonight. And we'll see what USC does against Michigan in the Rose Bowl. Kevin Jones used to wear number seven. He now wears number 25. His high school coach, Jim Matoli, had a son who was killed tragically, yeah. who wore that number. He wore 25 in high school, so he went back to 25 this season uh, as a courtesy to his high school coach and his lost son. Very classy thing to do for this junior out of Cardinal O'Hare High School. First and 10 now for the Hokies as the measurement moves the chain. The speed option, fake pitch, and dropped immediately by Bly Misa, the outside linebacker. Minus three on the play. Well, whenever you're playing against the option, it, option is all responsible football. Someone has to be responsible for the quarterback. If there's no fullback, forget him. Someone the quarterback and someone the pitch man. There's Bly Misa, there's Wendell Hunter, both coming in and taking care of their responsibility. Randall not able to pitch it off. Bly Misa, great speed. 4.5 in the 40. Plays mostly over the tight end. Second and 12. Randall will flare out to Jones. He dropped immediately by Wendell Hunter, the outside linebacker. He's an honorable mention, all Pac-10 selection. Minus six on the play. And he knows how to make some tackles. 89 on the year. He had 15 tackles against Illinois. Excellent athlete at 230 po uh, pounds, especially in space. When you're in space, you have to be able to make the tackle one-on-one. -on -one. Kevin Jones had been shaking the initial tackle there. He wasn't able to. Hunter, the blitzer on the team, seven and a half sacks on the season for the junior out of Carson High School in California. Third in a long way. 
Cal shows the blitz and then backs off. Randall can't find anybody and is dropped to the ground at the 25-yard line by Ryan Riddle, number 90, the junior, the sack specialist. Came into this game with five and a half sacks on the season and finally gets to Randall. You know, I like they do this. Watch, nobody's in the stance. Nobody's in the stance on the D-line. They're all in two-point stance, so you don't know what gap they're going to come into to kind of try and confuse the offensive line. you got to love to see when D-linemen are athletes like that. Vin Bernie, his first punt of the night for Virginia Tech, and it's a good one. Strang takes it at the 20. And is finally brought down at about the 34-yard line by Blake Warren. 49 yards on the punt, 14 on the return. Well, when we come back, we'll talk about what effect Jeff Tedford has had on some of the bright young quarterbacks in the game. Up the inside ball, a tie ball game, 28 all, California to Virginia Tech. 651 remaining here in the third as the Cal defense comes up big, forcing another sack of Randall. Nishimandu now in the football game as the lone setback for Cal. Rodgers goes to work. Semi-roll play action and looking deep, and he's got Lyman deep inside the 25-yard line, down to the 24, beating Vincent Fuller, the backup corner. 42 yards on the pass completion. Unbelievable. All the time in the world, he had good protection, a little bit of a roll right. A lot of time for the plays to develop down the field. And again, a Cal receiver getting behind the defense. Rodgers has certainly the arm strength to get it there, and he does. Again, Lyman filling in for Jeff MacArthur. Has four catches on the night and 125 yards. This is a guy they weren't sure they could count on, but he has come up huge in this game. Taller on the little flag route. D'Angelo Hall was the closest defender, but will move the chains again inside the 10, a gain of 14. What a great job by Rogers. Michael Crawford, the rover, was coming up like he was going to blitz Mark, and then he tried to get back in coverage. Rogers saw it, saw him hustling back for coverage, and knew he had a chance to get it in there. 21 is Crawford. He was up close to the line like he was going to blitz. Rogers knew he was going to have some time before Crawford could get back where he needed to be. What we call the old smash route, a hitch on the outside and the flag, and sometimes those corners read that, bail out, and then can make a play like that. First and goal. They hand the ball off to Ichimondo, and he runs in, standing up, touchdown, goal to bear. Well, well, well. And a lot of that is set up with Aaron Rodgers and his ability to throw the ball all over the field. That'll make the middle of the defense, especially in the second level, a little soft. Frank Beamer's wondering, wow, what is going on? And he took nine points away from the board with three missed field goals. Aaron Rodgers, just 19 years old, the quarterback having a great night as Ichimondo scores. Makes good on the extra point. And Cal rumbles back. We take another look at the touchdown. By the way, the Golden Bears, four for four in the red zone. This is a 10-yard touchdown run. Fantastic. Right up the gut. I'm sure the defense think and play action pass. That Jumondo doesn't get even touched until the second level. First by Jordan Trotty. Can't make the tackle. A lot of arm tackling. That Jumondo, 225 pounds. That's not going to do it. Jeff Tedford, long been known as an offensive guru. Coached his team to back-to-back -back winning seasons. Their first bowl appearance in seven years and of course he's coached some great ones trent dilper at fresno state achilles smith at oregon david carr the houston Texans' first overall pick of the nfl draft along with joey harrington the third pick overall and then there's kyle bowler the sensational rookie who's playing for the baltimore ravens right now and you can see drafted at 94 99 carr and harrington both in 2002 and bowler the 19th overall pick this past season. Well, I tell you what, the way Aaron Rodgers is playing, they want to add a chance to that list. He's 17 and 23 for 265 and two touchdowns. And he looks very, very comfortable. Fredrickson sends this one deep, and Emo will take it at the four. Racks a couple of tacklers out near the 30-yard line. 
26 yards on the return. And Virginia Tech has decent field position. Talk about Rodgers earlier, and again, the third best season by a Cal passer in terms of pass efficiency. He's done a tremendous football, or tremendous job with the football between he and Reggie Robertson. 26 TDs, just eight interceptions. That's good decision making. And normally, this guy's hot in the first half as Rodgers. Four times this year, Mark, he's had over 200 yards in the first half alone. Jones and Humes now, both halfbacks lined up in the backfield. The play action, Randall, bootlegs right, looking for the throwback. He's got Humes open. And it's incomplete. Close to looking like perhaps a pass interference when Bly Misa gets there, but no flags on the play. Well, I think it was good coverage. I mean, he didn't, obviously didn't look back for the ball, but I don't know if he had contact before the ball got there. It was awfully close. Um, Catching the end of the play there. I think Randall, if he had a little more on the ball, looks like, no, it didn't look like there was contact. <laughs> If Randall had a little more on the ball, they might not be in that, set, that situation. They have a complete pass. Now just with the one half back, Jones in the backfield. Out of the shotgun, Randall works on second and ten. Lots of time looking deep. And almost caught by Chris Reed, the wide receiver just off the fingertips. Capital One Bowl Week continues this Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time on ESPN2. And a Heisman runner-up, Larry Fitzgerald, leads the Panthers into Charlotte to take on quarterback Matt Schwab and the Virginia Cavaliers. For more information, you can log on to ESPN.com. Capital Bowl One Week continues. Very interesting with that Virginia defense, doesn't it, Mr. Fitzgerald? Especially around the goal line when it doesn't <laughs> matter who's covered and you throw it up. He's normally going to come down with it. Tremendous talent. Third and ten now for Virginia Tech. Pulls it down, and then caught from behind by Joe Meningo, the middle linebacker, the junior out of Los Altos for a four-yard game. Boy, you could definitely sense the momentum change going on here. These guys are flying all over the field. You get a look at Meningo's hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Why do you think that takes to dry? Well, I saw him in walkthrough yesterday. He had it all rolled yeah. up in a bun. It looked nice and tight and neat, and all of a sudden he came up with that. I don't know why you have the name placard on the back. You can't read it. That is unbelievable. <laughs> so a flag on the play as Vontek had lined up for the punt. And Vinny Burns is on for just his second punt of the day for Virginia Tech as the officials try to get it squared away. Prior to the snap, ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. And when things are bad, they get worse, Mike. Well, I tell you, there's going to be a lot of pressure on this Virginia Tech defense already. Giving up 35 points, and we talked about their struggles this year, especially the last four games where they lost three of them and only beat Temple by a point in overtime. The defense was getting run on. They were really struggling, as they are tonight, though not getting run on as much, but really getting thrown all over by Aaron Rodgers. So Burns, 10 yards better than his average on his first punt. As long of the season, 62 yards. And this is a nice spiral, but it won't turn over. And kicks back out at about the 42-yard line. And that's where the Cal Golden Bear offense will take over. Joe Meningo of that defense has found a way at halftime as he puts pressure on Randall and forces the team to kick. Cal lead 35-28, 4.30 remaining in the third. Back at the inside bowl, it's Bob California out to a seven-point lead with 4.30 left over Virginia Tech. As we wish everybody happy holidays and certainly the college football fans in the Southwest happy about this football game coming to Phoenix. Fantastic. Again, sellout. All the Virginia Tech and Cal fans seeing an excellent football game. Offensively. Adam, Adam Chinubi on the play action, and Rogers tries to dump it out in the flat to the fullback. Mandarino. He's tackled by Jimmy Williams, and we'll call it no gain. Well, that's something Mandarino's done this year, coming into the night with 10 receptions. Fullback known mostly for blocking, not many carries. 
Snap's looking good for Cal. Mentioned he's a walk-on in 2002. And he's a sure-handed receiver. As he heads to the sideline and give him two yards on the pickup to make it second down and eight. Uchimandu off the right side, up just past the 45-yard line. Vegas Robinson, the inside linebacker, makes the stop after a two-yard game. Way to fill a hole as we take a look at the last drive for Cal again. Aaron Rodgers laying it out. The lineman is having a big night. Here are the out route, another nice throw. The caller, that Jumandu finishes it off straight up the gut. I'm sure everybody's thinking play action pass rollout. There's that Jumandu just running straight ahead for six. So that brings up third down and seven now as Ichimandu stays in the game as the lone setback. over the middle to the tight end. Brandon Hall near the 40-yard line. Jordan Trott, the inside linebacker, makes the stop. We'll call it 16 yards on the game, and they'll move the chains again. Boy, when you can have a tight end in the middle of the field. Quarterback's best friend a lot of times. It's sure that, is. It's that security blanket. <laughs> Look outside, but there's that big guy. 6'4", 245, standing right past the stick. Nobody around him. Figure he's going to have some sure hands, and there it is. First and ten now. Oh, no. oh you got us on the hitch and go. We'll go hitch and go. And Chase Lyman comes up with yet another big play for the Cal offense. Jimmy Williams, Eric Green were the two there that got caught in the bad coverage. And by the way now, Aaron Rodgers is number two all-time at Cal passing. 310 yards on the night. Well, look at this fake pump. Oh, Green steps up, and it's all she wrote. Rodgers knows it. He knows he just has to lay it right over the top. A great job. Watch, watch Eric Green bite up, stop, plant. He's gone. Rodgers knows it, and he lets the ball go right now. Green, we should say, did not start this game. He's a normal starter, but he had a cast on a bruised wrist. He missed 2002 with an ACL problem. As they go back to the ground now, up near the 12-yard line, Foles Colas makes the stop a four-yard game. I want to make a point, too, about Rodgers. You mentioned now he's second all-time. In single-season passing to Cal. And, and some people may say, well, this is their 14th game now because bowls count. He missed one game, so that knocked it to 13, and he didn't start the, the first, first four, four games. <laughs> exactly right. So it's not like he's played a full 14 games, so he absolutely deserves the credit uh, for being number two right now. He's 10-1 at Butte College. When San Diego State, he was talking to him about a scholarship, fired their coaching staff, Ted Tolner. So he went to junior college, was 10 and 1 there, ranked second in the country, then came here. And Jeff, Ted, Jeff Tedford is certainly happy about that. It's Mondo, the carry off the right hand side, pushes the pile down to about the eight yard line. Jimmy Williams, the free safety, was there first for Virginia Tech, and we'll call it a gain of four. Well, for the most part, Virginia Tech's been just fine stopping the run save for the, the run for the touchdown, but Cal has not rolled up a lot of rushing numbers, but they just can't seem to stop the pass. They keep fighting on the play action, or we saw the the, uh, the pump and go, or they bit, but well, I wouldn't be falling for much play action. The only yards they've been getting is really through the air. A lot of 95 yards rushing tonight already. Doug Foster, the defensive coordinator, tries to find an answer. Third and three. comes out with an option of his own and dives for the touchdown and they save him. Touchdown Golden Bear. Eight yards and here's a guy that you wouldn't call an option quarterback no. but that was pretty effective. Well they had the corner there. Rogers saw it. Knew if he wasn't going to get there he was going to be able to pitch it out. His second rushing touchdown of the night that's his fifth for the season. Great drive. Fredrickson on his leg must be getting sore. The extra point. My goodness. 42 points on the board now for Cal with 48 seconds remaining. Still in the third quarter. And again, Brian Randall, you know, not many times you can say, listen, we're going to put it on his shoulders. 
to go past it and win the game. Virginia Tech has their work cut out for him as we see this option left. It looks like he's, he's going to run it all the way. It. He tucked it in that left arm. He wasn't even going to think about taking the ball. He tucked it and he's going. He's listed at 6'2", 195, but I stood next to him. I think he's at least six foot three. Yeah. The big guy, and I don't think there's any question. Should he stay healthy, he will definitely be playing on Sundays in the National Football League. Boy, all of a sudden, coming in the next year, you know, you have the quarterbacks leaving this year. Roethlisberger has declared he's leaving for Miami of Ohio. Yes. Eli Manning is gone. Phillip Rivers from North Carolina State. J.P. Lawson from Tulane. Well, you know, come around next year, this kid's going to name, and name is going to be up there on the board pretty high. Of course, the big play in this drive, or one of them, was the pump play. Of course, that went to Chase Lyman, who's filling in for the injured Jeff MacArthur. Great patience, great route, and great catch as Eric Green jumped at the hitch and got him enough to get the completion down inside the 10-yard line. Mike Ebo takes it from the goal line. Doesn't like what he sees, slows down, and then it's swarmed at the 19-yard line. Chris Mandarino was there first. Well, the NFL's double coverage weekend kicks off Saturday at 8.30 Eastern time as league MVP candidate Donovan McNabb leads the Eagles into the nation's capital to take on the Redskins. Coverage starts with NFL primetime, presented by Miller Lite at 8 Eastern. Then on Sunday night at 8.30, Jamal Lewis looks to break the single-season rushing record as the Ravens battle the Steelers. Coverage begins with NFL primetime, presented by Miller Lite, 7.30 Eastern time. Both games, obviously, can be seen in ESPN HD. Marcus Vick. Lined up top of your screen. The play action. Randall looking deep, looking for Milford. Can get a hand on it, but can't bring it in. Dante Hughes, the freshman's corner, was stride for stride with Milf Wilford. You know, I, I don't understand this. Uh, you know, last drive they did this a couple of times. Kevin Jones has been running the ball well, or swing it to him to get him into space. I don't understand this. Now, it's been three long bombs in the last two series. I mean, you're hoping for a height advantage there, a jump ball. You're not at that point yet. You have 34 seconds left in the third quarter. You have time to have Kevin Jones run the ball and still set up the defense for you, yet you're not doing it. I think it's a point very well made as the game starts to get away now for Virginia Tech. Second and 10. Again, the long bomb. Looking for Marcus Vick. In and out of the hands of the backup quarterback, Harrison Smith. The backup field corner was there in coverage. Well, I'll tell you, Harrison Smith did a nice job of raking his hands down as, again, Virginia Tech goes long down the field when you have number 25 in the backfield. I, now, it looked like it was close to a completion. Give Harrison Smith some credit. Let's see if he has anything to do with it. Oh, looked like Vic just dropped that ball. Harrison was there, had his arms all over him, but we've seen Vic make a couple of nice catches tonight. So after doing such a good job on third downs in the first half, Virginia Tech 0 for 3 on third down occasions in the second half tonight. This third and 10. Randall over the middle and finds Wilford to the 40 and down at the 43-yard line tackled by Ryan Gutierrez. That was impressive because, Mark, they had to go 10 yards, so they had to get good protection for Randall and he got protection is able to hang in the pocket let those routes get going down the field knowing you had to get far enough to get the first down 23 yards on the game and Wolford now a Virginia Tech record 123 career receptions for Wilford he needed four coming into tonight's game his school record was 121 and by the way he has a 27 game streak of receptions now as they go back to work on the ground Jones yeah, well, what do you breaking know? tackles across midfield and down near the 45 yard line 12 yards on the carry for Jones as they'll move the chains again and that'll bring us to the end of the third quarter Virginia Tech trailing by two touchdowns trying to get back into this ball game Welcome back to the Bob at the Inside Bowl. Big East and Pac-10, California and Virginia Tech. If you look at score by quarter, Virginia Tech, 21 points. Then they've kind of fallen asleep as California has rolled back with 21 points here in the third quarter. We begin the fourth, and Marcus Vick now at the bottom of your screen, lined up wide right for Virginia Tech. The hitch 
bubble screen. He's jumping inside and is finally dragged down by Ryan Riddle, the defensive end, after a three-yard game. Well, I thought they might have had something there. You saw Cal coming with the blitz up the gut. They get the ball to the outside, but good hustle by that California defense. Interesting third quarter, Mark. It, you saw the outscoring, Cal outscoring Virginia Tech 21 and nothing in the third quarter. Virginia Tech all year has outscored their opponent 102 to 49. Wow. So, I mean, complete opposite tonight. Mark Smith still in the ball game, lined up at the top of your screen, wide left. That's him in motion. And here comes the reverse, and it's going to be a pass, but he says, now I'll pull it down and run. Finally knocked out of bounds by Dante Hughes, a gain of five on the play. Good coverage by James Bathia down the field on Ernest Wolford. He was running the deep route. Bathia not fooled at all. Again, when Michael Vixen, uh, or when Michael, <laughs> when Marcus Vixen in the game, and again, his, uh, Michael is a left-hander, Marcus is a right-hander, right. so he took the handoff coming right. He's going to be a passing set. If you're a DB, know your responsibility. Say, my guys in front of me are going to take care of it. I'm going to cover my receiver. I knew somebody tonight was going to say yeah. Michael instead of Marcus. I'm glad it was you. Yeah, I the, was afraid it was going to happen to me. I'm the big dumb <laughs> D lineman. You're the smart quarterback. Yeah. 32 now for Virginia Tech. Yo, up oh. inside. He just oh. runs over. Sophia just runs over the tiny corner who is six feet, 190 pounds. A gain of 13. He looked like he was 5'6 and 120. Are you kidding me? We talk about slipping the first tackle. There was no slipping here. This is Kevin Jones saying, you know what? I'm going to flat out run you over. This is beautiful. Watch the pad level. Down low. Boom. Wow. Oh, oh, man. And then again. He's hitting through it and already looking and setting up Gutierrez after that. Watch and listen. Wow. Cedric Hume's down the ball game as Jones gets a breather and they come out strong. Oh, has he tied in? Keith Willis, touchdown. Oh. 22 yards on the pass play. Fitz Slater was in coverage. And when you can run the ball like yeah. they just did with Kevin Jones, that's what you can do with play action. That's exactly right, because Willis is 6'5", 260. He's not a speed demon. Sid Slater could probably you normally keep up with him, but you have some a running game going. Linebackers could possibly have to stay to the line a little more as we have a different kicker here, Mark. That's Brandon Payne, the redshirt freshman, 5'10", 191, and he gets the bottom for an extra point. Maybe that's a precursor for a possible field goal here in the fourth quarter as he makes good on the extra point as Willis is excited about uh, his contribution to the Vod Tech offensive run here in the fourth quarter. We've got a one-touchdown football game, so don't go anywhere, anybody. Not within a touchdown here. As you see Sid Slater is going to see the run start here. He's going to keep shuffling sideways as the tight end is able to beat him. Watch how long he stays parallel on the run. He slides, slides, and turns and says, uh-oh, I need to be on Keith Willis. That's what a great running game is going to do. It's going to keep the linebacker at the line going parallel before he can turn and run. Very good illustration there. I write like a two-year-old. <laughs> Brandon Faith got to kick the extra point, but this is Carter Warley who struggled oh, with this field goal. No and they kicked his second kickoff out of bounds for the evening. And again, Cal will get the ball at the 35-yard line. Mark, everything... Ball will be placed on the 35-yard line. First down. Everything is pulling right. The three field goals, the two kickoffs out of bounds. You wonder if there's something wrong with them. You, I mean, you want, I mean, outside of mentally at, at this point, because to, to have everything go in that exact same spot. Well, this happens to be on the golf course. I put the big stick away, start hitting the two iron. Oh, let me tell you, you're not <laughs> kidding me. You want to talk about going into the underbrush. Yeah. Frank Beamer, the man who made Beamer ball famous, can't believe it. He's just telling Brandon he'll kick off. We'll see a change there as well. I think we're going to see Warley again. J.J. Arrington now in the backfield for Ichimondu. Grant comes across and takes the handoff off the motion. And drug out of bounds at about the 35-yard line as Blake Warren makes the play. All right, let's get you caught up with some of the action in this football game. Early on, we mentioned Carter Warley. Three missed field goals of 40, 45, and 29 yards has cost 
Vaughn Tech some problems. Meanwhile, Aaron Rodgers has just been hot. 306 yards on the day, two touchdowns already, and he's rushed for two touchdowns. He has been the focal point of that Cal offense. Best thing about this game, Mark, we still have 13 minutes and 29 seconds to go. <laughs> and a lot can happen with Frank Beamer's Virginia Tech offense, especially with Kevin Jones in the backfield. Rodgers, play action, dumps it off to Mandrino. The fullback in the flat and drags a couple of tacklers past the 45 for Aaron Rouse. Hauls him down a gain of 12 and will move the chain. The most, uh, would you agree with this, Mark? The most, uh, the most underrated receiver in all of football, college pros, the fullback. You lose him the most out in the coverage, and when he gets the ball, a lot of times he can do a heck of a lot of damage because of his size. He's only had 10 attempts running the football. I mean, clearly he's a lead blocker with sure hands. He's right. A good pass catcher. I think you mentioned he caught 10 balls coming into tonight's game, but obviously a guy they figured heavily into this offensive game plan. Two tight end set now for Cal. As Russ comes in motion. The ball handed off to Arrington. And he's stopped immediately by Jimmy Williams, the free safety. No gain on the play. Well, it has been all Aaron Rodgers' arm tonight because they can't get a thing going on the ground. Again, this is a Cal team averaging 170 yards on the ground coming into tonight. Virginia Tech defense known for stopping the run, but had trouble at the end of the year, but it's been Aaron Rodgers. Look at that, the last four games. He has been on fire. You talk about a guy that grasps the system is only going to grow as a sophomore. Remember, folks, he's only 19 years old. Rodgers, under pressure, tucks it, drops his shoulder, and rolls out to about the 47, 48-yard line before Jonathan Lewis drags him down a six-yard game. Take a look at Cal and over the last five games when they finished four and one. We mentioned the four wins. They averaged 43 points a game. Yeah. I mean, they only scored 28 against Stanford, but look at those. 54, 51, 42 against Arizona. And their playmakers, Aaron Rodgers, we talked about, and the guy that's not playing tonight, Jeff MacArthur, he's back next year as well. Yes, exactly. So his 85 receptions are coming back. Might be the preseason favorite for the 2004 season, especially if Larry Fitzgerald opts out yep. for the NFL. Third and four. Rodgers Adriana. jumps outside to Arrington. Nobody covers him, as Mike says, and he's tackled at the 36-yard line by Aaron Rouse. A gain of 11. That's just a, that's just an absolute. That that'll send Bud Foster in a convulsion to defensive coordinator. I mean, there's just nobody out there. See the smile on Rodgers' yeah. face. You think he's having a good time tonight? <laughs> That's just too easy. Can he go out left? Hey, look at that. Look at that. Nobody. Well, that's a bad mistake on third down when you're trying to get the ball back. It certainly is. So about 11 minutes remaining in this football game. California up by a touchdown on first and 10 and drive. Play action. Dumps it down, Ichimandu gets a block from Colton, and then gets out near the 27-yard line before Nolan Burchett just puts a hit on it. Yeah, Ichimandu is uh, getting up rather slowly on that one. That was a shot. Ichimandu is still down as the trainers come out and attend to him at this point. But I, I tell you what I, I do like out of the play is they were going for it as Bud Foster is not looking happy on the sideline. I mean, Cal was going for it there. You saw Rogers looking deep, Mark, and it wasn't there, so he checked down. That Jamondo who took a shot at the end of that play. So the 11th straight completion for Aaron Rodgers. We'll get close to a first down. They tend to Ichimandu. We'll come back with more fourth quarter action from the inside bowl. Stay with us. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2003 Insight Bowl. Presented by Insight, your single source for IT products and services. And in part by the Chrysler Pacifica, well beyond the SUV. And Capital One, what's in your wallet? 
back at Bank One Ballpark here in Phoenix, Arizona, the Insight Bowl. California leading by a touchdown, 10-41 remaining as Ichimandu now has been taken off the field. It's a lower leg injury. We're not sure if it's a knee or an ankle. We'd want to speculate on that. Been bothered by a bad yeah. ankle for the last couple of weeks. And that brings J.J. Arrington into the ball game now. He lines up deep in the eye formation. The pitch outside and doesn't fool Jimmy Williams. The sophomore out of Bethel High School in Hampton, Virginia, is there to make the stop a loss of four. Jimmy Williams, that, this guy's a safety, Mark. He's 6'3", 215. I mean, this is, this is where it's going now. Safeties are becoming, they're just, they're just, they're linebackers who can cover extremely well. This guy has cornerback cover skills and can come up and play like a hard-hitting safety linebacker. Yeah, let's check in with Rob Stone. Rob? Yeah, looking at Echimondu, they're not so much worried about the knee as the right ankle. They've taken off the shoe, the socks, they're cutting off the tape job, and it's more concerned on the outside of his right ankle right now. All right, Rob, thank you for that update. He hasn't had a 100-yard rushing game since November 1st against Arizona State. Rodgers goes back to work out, back he'll throw it outside of the tight end Ross, and he'll pick up a couple of yards close to the 25-yard line before Vincent Fuller drags him out, and it's going to be first down Cal. 12 straight completion for Rodgers is half. Great call. Nothing fancy there. You want to keep possession, keep the clock going, and get yourself in a scoring opportunity here. He understands the offense. <laughs> They do a lot of audibling. They, you see him, we mentioned tonight, you'll see the hand signals. They won't change the play, but he'll actually change receiver right, routes by making hand signals to the receivers from time to time. Total control all the time. That's what Jeff Tetzler said he loves about the kid. Rarely gets flustered. Always keeps his fundamentals. Always does his check downs. I mean, he just, it's incredible, Mark, how this kid has picked up this system this well, this early. And Jeff Tetford said, you know, when I got him, he was mechanically pretty sound. He said, Kyle Bowler, that's another problem. We yeah. had some real work yeah. to do with Kyle, and Kyle turned into a great young quarterback with the Ravens. But he said, this kid mechanically was very sound when he got here from Butte College. Hand off to Arrington. Cuts it off the left side. Inside the 20, down to about the 18. Jonathan Lewis, the defensive tackle, is there to make the stop. We'll call it a gain of eight. Well, I'll tell you what, Cal hasn't been running the ball well, Mark, but if they can do it from 9-10 on the clock and in now, that would be all that matters. And that, again, is where Virginia Tech has struggled defensively the last part of the season. So, again, it doesn't matter where you start. It's where you finish it. If they could finish with a strong running game, that would be all they need. Bud Foster, the defensive coordinator for Virginia Tech, trying to find the answers. The football team that started out 6-0, ranked number three in the country, it's just somehow lost it down the stretch. Cal rushed for 114 yards so far this evening. Second down and four. Arrington gets the handoff again off the left side. Pick up a two on the play. And that's going to bring up third and relatively short yardage, Mike. You know, and Mark, one of the things we're not getting to touch on a lot because the game is so close and an excellent game is what these games do for next season. Oh. For Virginia Tech, we talked about how they finished on, on a bad note and want to want to get it back a little bit here. And for Cal, consolidated late in the season, and it's the, the, the program has been infused with enthusiasm with Jeff Tetford. No doubt about it. Tedford obviously spent a lot of time recruiting along with his staff. In fact, we hear he flew all the yeah. way to Australia for a one-hour visit for a kicker. A kicker. <laughs> Got on a plane and came back. 11th play of the drive. Harrington. Inside the 15, and that should be enough for a first down. Burchette and Bakke were there on the stop. We'll call it a two-yard gain. It may or may not be close enough for a measurement. Uh, he's got the first down. And what, have we seen in this game once, Mark? First and ten, three runs. Yes. First and ten for Cal. I mean, they've normally mixed in the pass. They haven't just been able to run the ball like this. And that's all they do. If they can run it three times to get ten yards, each, each one of the three, uh, the three of the ten, to make the first down, they're in great shape. Saw a shot there of Jeff Tedford, and we talked about how busy he's been. He's abused the Cal program. And remember, he took over after that he yeah. finished one and ten. I don't know how long he'll be coaching college football before the NFL comes banging on his door. Didn't that happen to another Cal coach that went on to a San Francisco? Absolutely. A six-minute 
on this drive already, the 12th play. And Arrington spills this one off to the left, puts his head down, but he stops. Vincent Fuller was in on the tackle along with Nathaniel Adibi, a pickup of two. And that Mariucci, when he was coaching Cal, that was the last time Cal was at a bowl. It was the Aloha Bowl in 1996. Of course, Mariucci went on to the 49ers and now Detroit Lions. And Tedford, as you have mentioned, Mark, a couple of times, the amount of quarterbacks that he has coached. So you're right, NFL, a lot of people are really going to dig that. Again, he said, you know, I took this team over. They were 1-10. The first thing we needed to do was instill confidence. Yeah. They had been beat down. They didn't believe they could win. Well, he's certainly done that, posting back-to-back 7-5 -back seasons. Rogers doesn't like what he sees back south, and he'll call a timeout. He'll go to the sideline and talk with Jeff Tedford about what it is the Cal offense will do next with a second and eight on the board. When we come back, we'll hear from the lead singer of Counting Crows. Do you like rock and roll or couch <laughs> sports more? <laughs> Stick around. They're not an athlete on the sideline. That's Adam Durrett, the lead singer for Counting Crows. Got a call, Adam. Take the call. <laughs> We're going to hear about him in just a moment. He is some Cal Berkeley sports fan. It was a pleasure to talk to him yesterday. Just recently moved to Manhattan from the West Coast. What are you going to do like that? Oh, boy, I wish I could. Marcus <laughs> O'Keefe has checked into the backfield now at halfback. And they run the reverse to Strain. He was in motion. Oh, he's in. Oh, wide hole and touchdown down. And the man voted the most inspirational as Frank Beamer's jaw dropping. He is a walk on from junior college. And look, look at, I mean, you, you can just tell right there with all his teammates going up to him like that what he means to this team. And you saw the look on Frank Beamer's face, and that says it all, too. Just believe. They pound for pound. He might be the best football player on the team. Fredrickson pulls this one over to the left, but gets through the uprights. And, the Bears now put 49 points on the board. With 6.26 remaining here in this football game. Take a look. The motion, the handoff. They've run this before, but a good block, Mike. And that, that's just perfect. Again, lining out to the outside, blocking, staying on their feet. Giving Strang all the room he needed. There was nobody near him. I think it's pretty easy to lift him. I think the cheerleaders <laughs> can run over there and lift him up and carry him off the field. The first guy there, Chase Lyman, number 15, who's done a tremendous job replacing Jeff MacArthur, who broke his arm in practice this week. So some guys that you might not have heard right. a lot about during the season coming up big in this bowl game. Well, they always say big-time big players step up in big games, but you always have those players, too, Mark, that you don't hear a lot about that all of a sudden have that big game. They get the opportunity, like like Lyman, guy who in three days is getting yeah. his ankle operated on. A guy like Strang, who, who has been through so much. And, oh, look, there's Adam Dirt. <laughs> They're having a good time down on that sideline. Hold on. Hold on indeed. A 13-play drive that ate up over seven minutes. Great job by Jeff Tedford. Mike Ebo will take it five yards in the end zone and take a knee. Let's check back in with Rob Stone. Rob? Well, Adam is the unofficial ambassador of Cal sports. He's at every, you're at women's soccer, you're at basketball, you're at football. He even spoke to the football team in the week leading up to the USC game. What did you tell him? Tell him to whoop their ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is cable. I love cable. Uh, that's all right. You know, keep it to your lyrics. All right. Um, did you talk to the team before this game? No, I've been hanging out with them all week, though. So let me come to practice and hang out. And I've got a lot of friends on the team, so. Now, Adam went to Cal in the mid-'80s, and uh, apparently you do some Stanford taunting at some of your concerts? Uh, there was some girl in the front row last week with a hat on. I reminded her of who had the axe. <laughs> and it ain't them. <laughs> One last question. You were at the play. Where were you, and what did you do? I was uh, in stands by student section. Uh, and I ran all the way around 
the field when it happened to find some friends of mine from Stanford. <laughs> I need to remind them of what had just happened. <laughs> hey, guys, round here. You like that? It's a little County Crows oh, reference. Yeah, round here, there's no bigger Cal fan Go than Bears. Adam Zurich. Go Bears! All right, Adam, again, a pleasure yeah. to talk to him yesterday, and uh, it's great to see those guys on the sideline. Just to catch you up to date, Marcus Vick was the quarterback of the last play, and he tried a pass to Brian Randall, the starting quarterback who lined up in wide receiver. to Wilford, who is driven out of bounds at about the 32-yard line by Joe Meningo. Well, they got a lot of work to do now with just six minutes to go because of the drive that Cal put together that took about seven minutes off the clock. So that's a great job by that offense. So uh, Virginia Tech not really known for that gunning the ball down the field, Mark, to make this, this much of a comeback, possibly. Now, I would imagine a guy like Joe Meningo listens to Counting Crows. Is, uh, it, is it in your CD collection? Uh, actually, it's in my, my boys, Mike and Jake, are here, <laughs> and I guarantee you they know all about that stuff. I listen to it just to kind of, you know, be along for the ride with it. Sure, they are fond of encounters of Mrs. Jones as they go deep here, and Wilford comes back and makes a spectacular catch wow. at the 39-yard line on James Bathia. 29 yards in all on the completion, and Virginia Tech is making a run. Boy, what a target Wolford is, too. Again, we, as we highlighted earlier, set an all-time uh, record for receptions at Virginia Tech and he came as we look and go up and leap for this at six foot four wow. he came to Virginia Tech he's a defensive end he was a DN and now the all-time leading wide receiver at Virginia Tech 104 reception yards on the day for Wilford as they mark it at the 40 yard line running out that Randall was trying to change the play the route goes to a timeout Frank Boone Beamer isn't happy but they're making a run 49 35 happy holidays from the Bob here in Phoenix Arizona the sign of the inside bowl as California leads Virginia Tech 49 35 554 remaining in the fourth but Virginia Tech is moving Randall again making signals to the wide receivers. Out of the shotgun, the hitch to Wilford, and then steps out of bounds at about the 34-yard line. James Bethia there in coverage. Capital One Bowl Week continues this Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time on ESPN2. As Heisman runner-up Larry Fitzgerald leads the Panthers into Charlotte to take on quarterback Matt Schwab and the Virginia Cavaliers. For more information, you can log on to ESPN.com. Second down and four. Randall out of the shotgun. Back inside to Jones, who oh. is hit by Menengo at the 30-yard line and oh. falls back to the 32. Josh what? Beckham's also there. I wonder what hit him first, the helmet or the hair. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> wow, that, that's coming up and filling that time. Another kid that came from junior college where it was last year. The junior college had 33 tackles for loss and 15 sacks. He's used to playing on the other side of the ball. Hamilton in motion, and Jones gets the ball again and sidesteps the tackler and out to about the 28-yard line on the play. Wendell Hunter and Dante Hughes are there, a gain of seven. Well, I, I mean, I like, the, I like the call to get the first down, but I think we need to start to see a little... Just, just pick it More up the urgency. pace a little bit. Just a little bit pick it up here. We see Ichimondu right there taking off on a card again. The right ankle injury. He's been bothered by an ankle injury over the last couple weeks of the season. 440 now remaining in this ball game. Randall looking deep. Has a receiver. Touchdown, Chris Green. Mike Golick, you wanted some urgency, and just like that, a 28-yard touchdown strike from Randall to Shreve, and they're back in the ball game. There are 90 points on the board right now. <laughs> Hope y'all took the over. <laughs> wow. Take a look at Chris Shreve. He's got a brand-new tattoo on his arm that says, Through every dark night, there's a bright day. 
to his girlfriend Tiffany. Tiffany, excuse me, who was, by the way, abducted by some carjackers and stuffed in a trunk. She got away okay, but she is his angel and inspiration. And what a night he's had tonight to get them back within a touchdown. Great job again. Randall's got some time. That always helps when you're going on a deep route. He starts to feel a little pressure late, but for the most part, he's standing back there clean. Three pulls away from Bethia for the score. And Mark, you know, look, look, as we look at this again, look at some of the top players that we're talking about. MacArthur for Cal, uh, he's out. Ernest Wilford, a big-time receiver, obviously, for Virginia Tech. And Kevin Jones, we know about. Who's making the play? Shreve there on the side of Virginia Tech. Lyman and Strang right. on the side for Cal. Obviously, to go along with Rogers and some of the others. But here's guys not a lot of people have heard of and didn't come into this game with a lot of stats. Shreve came into tonight with just, what, I believe, eight catches. Eight catches. So, I mean, not, not a whole lot going on with these guys as coming into this game, but they're certainly coming into their own here. And Grayson County, Virginia, has 4-4 four, four speed. And two touchdowns of, the, of those eight catches on the season. Take a look at the stats here, and how about that, guys? Over 1,000 yards combined of total offense. And you already mentioned it, 90, over 90 points on the board right now. 129 plays in this game, and there's still 428 to go. Now, uh, Virginia Tech, you know, uh, I pick a defense, or Cal, when they're on defense, some of the defense has to step up here. I mean, no matter what went on in this game, everyone's going to get ripped in the films after this one if they even watch it. But you know what? It all matters right now. Virginia Tech can come up with a stop to let their team maybe get back in there. Three missed field goals by Carter Warley. And two kickoffs out of bounds has brought Brandon Pace onto the field now. And he'll do the kicking here for Virginia Tech. As Cal calls a timeout, they have one remaining. And as Jeff Tedford talks it over with his team, we'll take a break. 428 remaining in the fourth. Stay with us, everybody. Ballpark in Phoenix, Arizona. Mark Malone, Mike Golick, and Rob Stone was here, here with you. 428 remaining here in the fourth quarter as Virginia Tech is closer to within a touchdown now as the Bears lead. And again, Brandon Pace is kicking off. James Bathia now will line up as the lone setback. And the ball bounces in front of him, and he's going to kick it out of bounds at about the 10 yard line. This reminder, Sports Center coming up next with Carl Ravitch and Neil Everett. Mile high, hoop high. And the Yanks share the wealth along with Swami's fashion stick. Or Swami's fashion stick, excuse me. Swami and fashion should belong to the no, same thing. No, no, you just can never read that in the same line. And how about the Yanks sharing the wealth? 48 mil that George Steinbrenner has, has had to shell out in revenue, sharing which he wanted to, but 11 million in, in the luxury tax that he got nailed for, which he hates, because that goes to other teams, and they spend it on whatever they want. So George's not a happy man writing checks. No, not happy, but it's good to be the king. Yeah. <laughs> First and 10 now, bad field position. At the 11-yard line. Delay of game. Delay of game call. I mean, wh what a difference now already, Mark. We've seen two kickoffs out of bounds to where Cal got the ball in the 35 here. You get Brandon Pace kicking it off. Cal boots it out of bounds at the 11. Now get a delay of game. What a difference in field possession alone. 426 remaining. They'll move the ball back down to the six-yard line. And Jeff Tedford screaming on the line or on the sideline. Snap yeah. the ball. You know, I don't know if he's talking to the center, Marvin Phillip or Aaron Rodgers. Even if you run a little dive play, just snap it. Don't, don't go five yards back. And I imagine here comes the pressure. Everybody up around the line of scrimmage. Rodgers. The waggle throws it out. Oh, oh and a tremendous God. diving catch by Chase Lyman, but they say it's incomplete. Boy, I love the guts of Cal going for that one, saying, uh-uh, you're going to put everybody in the box, think we're going to run it, we're going to throw it. And they almost pulled it off there. Look at this throw. Everybody's waiting for the run. Way to lay out. Whoa. Oh, man, that Boy, knee is that close right to the line. came down. Oh, he uh, was in. He was inbound. He was in. Now did he have control of the ball? 
No review in college football. Nope. By the way, the first incomplete pass for Aaron Rodgers in the Cal offense in the second half. Second down and 15. Throw the ball and in and out of the hands of the intended receiver caller. So if you're just joining us here at the Bank One ballpark, Rodgers has been unbelievable. He's counted for four touchdowns. One rushing, there's another one throwing to Chase Lyman. And then again, he found Arrington out of the backfield and then on the option, tucks his head and dives in. Four scores for the 19-year-old quarterback out of Chico, California. 343 yards passing, his fifth 300 plus game this season. Remember that name, you're gonna hear a lot about it. Oh, uh, you certainly are. Big third and 15 now for the Golden Bears. And they run the draw. Inside Arrington, fills it out, tucks it back up, he gets out to about the 12, maybe the 13 yard line, a pickup of six. Mattel Backey, the middle linebacker there to make the play for the Hokies. Now, in the 200 games under, under Frank Beamer, there have been 101 block kicks in Beamer ball. 52 of them have been punts. Let's see what we get here. They are masters at the punt block. They may try and set up a return here because of where D'Angelo Hall is standing at around the 50-yard line. First punt for Cal this half, Tyler Fredrickson. He's done a pretty good job. They worked on trying to get the ball off quickly in the free game as I was down on the field. And the senior poised to take the step. Here comes the pressure, but the ball is off. End over end kick. Hall will take it at the 48. Make oh, he's in. got a wall. And now he's got a wall. He's gone. Will he break it? Touchdown and then touchdown. Oh, you Virginia are Tech. kidding me. A 38 yard punt. Returned 52 yards by D'Angelo Hall. His third punt return for a touchdown this season. Mark kicked to one side of the field and as soon as he scooted past three of the, the the Cal players on the kick team he had nothing but open space and about a three or four person wall so after the kicking game is haunted Virginia Tech all night long D'Angelo Hall comes up with his third punt return for a touchdown on the season he had returned two touchdown punts against Syracuse early this year become the Big East Coast Special Teams Player of the Year. His sixth career punt return as a college football player. And again, D'Angelo Hall, a guy who's going to make his decision after the game, whether it comes back. I think he's made his decision. Yes. I think he's just elected to announce that decision. Look at this. Now look at everybody here. As soon as he scoots those three guys, he's got nothing but room and blockers, and he's pointing them out. Excellent job of blockers. He's got to beat the punter. He can do that. Almost gets tripped up almost stepped out of bounds but gets in the end zone this is what happens when you kick to one side and they escape it there's nothing but green on that side and he's got three or four blockers 4.1540 40 time played 20 to 25 offensive plays a lot on offense this year started the defense return kick he is a one-man wrecking crew Here's a guy who, through the years, played 82 plays on offense, 586 plays on defense, 119 plays on special teams, 787 plays in all. Excellent cover corner, excellent one-on-one -on -one and open field tackler, but maybe the thing that has pro scouts drooling the most is what you just saw, his ability to return punch. Well, we're just two points short now of a combined 100-point scoring night between these two teams. The game tied at 49, but there's 3.11 left. Virginia Tech has to kick the ball off, and the way that Aaron Rodgers has Cal offense has played in the second half, that might be too much time. As Brandon Pace sends the ball deep. Oh, out of bounds. And out of bounds. Are you kidding me? For the third time tonight, and for the first time for Brandon Pace, the ball goes out of bounds. Frank Beamer can't believe it and Cal will take over at the 35-yard line. And again, Frank is the special teams guy. I mean, that's his show. So he has just got to be absolutely sick about three missed field goals, the way they were missed, and three 
kickoffs that have gone out of bounds. Remember last time, Cal started at the 11-yard line. Now look at him at the 35, and all they need is a field goal. That's Carter Worley. He kicked two out of bounds on the kickoff, and it's three field goals of 40, 45, and 29. Nobody wants to stand next to him. <laughs> Frank Beamer does not want to talk to Brandon Bates right now as Brandon tries to explain himself, but the redshirt freshman gets very little attention from the head coach. 3-11 remaining, first and 10. Rogers starts to throw and then pulls Bumble. it down. The ball is loose. Let's see what the ruling is. Rogers says Cal has it. And number 78, Chris Murphy, the right tackle, comes back up with it. Kevin Lewis was the defensive tackle to jar the ball loose. That's one thing we haven't seen. There's a ton of pressure on Rogers. But here comes Lewis. He's a D tackle. He just flat out bull rushes. Wow. That's a great job. Mark, uh, I say you ask any quarterback, I'll ask you, your quarterback, where do you hate pressure the most? Right, right up the up. middle. You don't want it in yep. your face or around your feet where you have to step into the throw. I can't be, believe Rogers actually actually held on to that ball after pulling it down as he goes back and dumps the ball outside Arrington. He's got a little bit of a gap. He gets out to the 40-yard line. And that's going to bring up a third and five. Backy and Lewis were there on the stop after an 11-yard pickup. Excellent play. Excellent play after the loss to gain that much to make it a third and five situation. The way Aaron Rodgers has been distributing the ball tonight, third and five, you've got to favor Cal in this situation unless Virginia Tech can get that pressure again. Just under two minutes now, third and five. A very critical third and five for the Golden Bears. Three wide receivers all lined up to the left. Rogers goes inside to the tight end. Brandon Hall is working in conjunction with Arrington on a route to the weak side. And Hall gets it down to the 42, a pickup of 17. Warren and Crawford were there for the Virginia Tech defense. In a zone defense, which is what they're playing against, all you ask your tight end to do is find the hole. And this is what he does going to find it right in there. There's nobody there and there's the ball. He sees the linebacker splitting. Paul knows where the hole is. He curls right in there and Rodgers hits him. Again, that security blanket for the quarterback is that tight end that can find that hole in the zone. Great patience by Rodgers. He was looking to get the ball to Arrington in the flat and came off late to Hall. Back to pass again on first down. It throws oh. it back over the middle to Kohler, who's wide open and finally brought down at the 20-yard line by Michael Crawford, the strong safety. We'll call it a pickup of 22 on that play. Well, his ability to scoot there, we saw what happened when he got the pressure on him and went down. Now his ability to scoot and buy time. Again, you'll see receivers, the ability to find where the holes are in the zone. Look at this. No panic. Scoot knows he can make a better play throwing the ball than running there. His receivers come free. Nobody panics in this Cal offense. That's the impressive thing. Well in field goal range now. 27 of 35, 395 yards, two touchdowns. That's a career high for Aaron Rodgers. They hand the ball off to Arrington. He flashes up the middle near the 15-yard line, a pickup of five. Green and Crawford. Where there are the stops for the Hokies defense. Well, Virginia Tech, if they want any time left on the clock, they should be calling timeout. They got two left. Let's also point out that Tyler Fredrickson is 14 of 29 on the season. That's 48% from field goal range. He has struggled. A big, strong late kicker. He's had five of them blocked right, this year. Right, right. So this is no guarantee if no. Cal has to kick the field goal. Uh, 12 of the 15 misses, three hit the upright. Did you mention five were blocked, and four he missed were from 54, 51, 50, and 49. This is going to be nowhere near that far. And if I'm Virginia Tech, there's no way I'm saving timeout. you got to call a timeout. 19 and seconds, and gonna. here we go. The clock is running again. Approaching now 1,100 total yards as they put it in the middle of the field. And they will use their final timeout with two seconds remaining on the clock. And out walks Tyler Fredrickson. Is Aaron Rodgers the first to encourage the young kicker?
Reggie Robertson, the backup quarterback, is the holder. I, and they're putting it all on this. I don't know, uh, Mark. I mean, I think I'd have used those timeouts. Would you have? I mean, you had two left. I think he iced the kicker. Down. I want to ice him Well, here. now he iced it, but I would have tried to leave just a little bit of time on the clock. You know, in case for a nice kickoff return or whatever could happen. Matt Curd, number 51, is the short snapper as we give you all the important players on this last field goal opportunity for Jeff Tedford and the Cal Berkeley Bear. And again, remember I had told you about the 101 blocks under Frank Beamer, 52 punts, 28 were field goals. Well, from this range, which will be about 35 yards, Fredrickson is four of eight. Our Capital One player of the game, Aaron Rodgers. 394 passing yards, a career high. He's figured into four touchdowns, two passing, two rushing tonight. What a great, great game he's had for the 19-year-old sophomore. You said it there, sophomore. Sophomore. He's amazing. Great composure. He's got a great future in front of him. Well, right now they want number 16 to have great composure, Tyler Fredrickson. What a wake. California Golden Bear team would be sent off into the offseason. Nice winning streak at the end of the year. Springboarding on in to next year. We'll see now. Virginia Tech will call a timeout. A lot of folks, including Frank Beamer, kind of out on the field right now. And they will call another timeout. It's going to be a 35-yard attempt as he plays with the mind of the senior from Santa Barbara. While we're waiting on this timeout, let's go down to the field and check in with Rob Stone. Rob? Well, Mark, is this the makings of a uh, Hollywood ending or what for Tyler Fredrickson? You know, he is a film major, and he's actually doing a documentary for his thesis project on this very football team, in particular, how they deal with stress and pressure <laughs> of playing football. He's got about 12 hours of footage shot on an 8-millimeter camera. He needs to whittle that down to about half an hour. He doesn't know the title for this yet, or it's... It's ending, or it's denouement, as they like to say in the business. And, and Tyler committed to this business. He's held summer jobs with George Lucas's film companies the last few years. And, and I knew, I knew he was ready for Hollywood when he told me yesterday to have my people call his people to talk about this story. <laughs> Very interesting. I talked with him yesterday. He said, I didn't bring my camera. I didn't want it to be a distraction. I said, you know, are you going to finish it today? He said, well, or, you know, after the game. He said, you know, I'll tell you what, I just... I'm not sure I want it as a distraction. The kicking game, as we focus it on Fredrickson, has gone awry for Virginia Tech. Three missed field goals, three kickoffs out of bounds, including the one that got Cal started at the 35-yard line for this drive. A 35-yard attempt. Matt Curd, the long snapper. Reggie Robertson, the backup quarterback, will hold for Tyler Fredrickson. Good snap, good hold. The field goal is good. Tyler Fredrickson, the senior, makes good from 35 yards out and gives Cal a bowl win here at the inside bowl. 52 to 49 over Virginia Tech. Fitting that that kick made it over 100 points total, 101 total points in this game. I bet those two seconds will be in his zone. <laughs> he might want to call somebody from ESPN and see if he can get this dubbed over to his Super 8 or whatever he's shooting his seat he's on. As the downward spiral for Frank Beamer and Virginia Tech continues here with a loss at the inside goal. But boy, what a future for Cal, it seems, huh? Oh, two winning seasons in a row, first time of that again in 12 years. Here you go. Good snap, good hole, and the kick is true. Final score, California Golden Bears 52, Virginia Tech Hokies 49. Coming up next at Sports Center. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For Mike Golick, Rob Stone, our entire ESPN crew, this is Mark Malone saying good night from Phoenix. Now, let's send you down to Sports Center. Center. Here's a nugget. Denver can do tonight what it could not do all of last year. Did LJ flash some MJ against the Bulls?
And does T-Mac have any stuff left in his stocking for the Spurs? Show me the luxury tax. How did the Yankees pay for the Marlins to win the World Series? And we continue motoring through Bowl Week. We provide plenty of insight. Who will earn home sweet home field advantage throughout the NFL playoffs? And speaking of the postseason, will Seattle's dreams of getting there walk out to sea? Give Boomer two minutes, he'll give you the world. Many happy returns. Sports Center. Right there. decent day. Welcome to Sports Center. Neil Everett and Carl Ravitz with weird ideas in our head about things to do in Denver when the Nuggets aren't dead. <laughs> Nuggets have uh, wrapped the whole season of wins in the last... ...of the Arizona defense. Arizona, I think, wants to come out and establish that they can stand up to this physical style of Nebraska, and I would expect to see a play-action pass looking to try to get...